Ladies and gentlemen, this is Commander Scorpius. Welcome to Sunday! If you're hearing this, that means several things have happened. Um, stars have aligned. Microsoft hasn't bought the machine. Audio levels are correct and hardware is not broken. So if all of those things are correct, then that means that you can hear my voice and we can get started. <laughs> um, so it looks like uh, yet, 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 what? A? Hey? <laughs> no window updates. There is sound. Yay! <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, Spooky. Hey, Lou. How you doing, mate? I'm Pro Rock. How are you doing as well? 07 to you. A Puffers, 07 to you, matey. Andy K. You're doing the 09 as well now. <laughs> it's infectious. It is. J26, hey up me ducks, how are you doing? Terracom, good evening, how are you doing? Bacchus, how are you doing mate? A god of drinking wine and partying. Cheers. You can't just cheers and then not take a drink. Mm. There we go. Uh, let's go. Tragic Blue, 072 as well. Happy! No, we're not nearly there yet. <laughs> how are you doing buddy? Uh, Weird to mute. How are you doing as well? Uh, guts. Uh, Shiv. What's that? Somebody needs something broken. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, Ik bin uh, bot Botios. How are you doing? I get, I get that wrong every single time. And Dead Star Omega. How are you doing as well? Yes, today. Today. We're looking at the Mandalay. The Mandalay, I hear you say. How far are we going? We're going away. Spooky, thank you for the sub. 72 months. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Tant and Grey. What, what's going on? Grey resubbed with Prime. Thank you. 44 months. So how's that Mandalay thing work? Do you have to fill in the colours myself? What? Do I have to fill in the colours myself? On a Mandal? What? I don't get it. I don't understand. Your, your humour is too efficient. Thank you for the subs, guys. That's really, really lovely. And we have a hype train started. Oh, my goodness. Um, it's paint by numbers. What is? What's paint by numbers? I don't understand. Mandalay is not paint by numbers. Mandalay is a snake. It is a spitting cobra. I have a picture. Look, look. There's a Wikipedia page and everything. Look at it. Look at that. And, and uh, what's his comp uh It's vulnerable. It's vulnerable. But it's a spitting bloody cobra. All right, so Mandalay is a real snake. Snake, yeah, it's a snake. Um, It's, yes, and it's the newest ship in the game coming up. Will be released to you lovely people on the delayed 28th. So in eight days time, you'll be able to buy this for ARCs. And then in about three months after that, you'll be able to get it um, for in-game money. And so also, though, what that means is on the 28th, you'll be able to get the Type 8 with in-game money. Is it a Type 8? I think so, because I think that one's currently... What have we got? So we've got the, the Python Mark II. We've got the Type 8. Now, the Mandalay is coming out. They haven't said what the new one is, have they yet? Because there's going to be a fourth. Um, but they, they said it was going to come out. Yes, this is the test server that I'll be on. We have good news. September is over. That's not good news. But gift, but give some discounts are still here. R right. Joey, how you doing, mate? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Who, who's interested in seeing the new ship? So I made sure it was available. I've not flown it yet. I've not been in it yet. This is totally totally first genuine first impressions and we're going to do a mini expedition out to barnard's loop that's my plan you all know how my plans always go they are always perfect pristine things that happen precisely as intended uh they said at least for this year so maybe next year too i hope so i hope so De uh, dead star mega i really do because um it's re-energized the game don't you think like, so more commanders have been coming back because so there's been new ships and new features have been promised and bug fixes. Because, of course, for the last couple of years, 
we had bug fixes after the Odyssey launch and they were necessary. There was lots and lots and lots of them. They did provide new functionality, new types of missions, stuff like that, some quality of life things. But if, in effect, they were, they were bug uh, fixes. And it could have been argued at the time that the game was in, air quotes, maintenance mode, which is normally where there's they're just keeping the game around, keeping the servers running, um, to, and you know players are still playing, but there's nothing new. And people were quite worried that that's what was happening. And then Frontier were like, okay, hold your horses, everyone. We've got big plans this year. So at least four ships, uh, upgrades to, well, we're getting the power plate upgrade. Um, so PP2, we're getting updated PP. <laughs> um, so that's coming out on the 28th. So the, um, they've, they've delayed it because of um, some feedback that they've received because uh, obviously it changes a bunch of stuff to do with BGS and uh, a bunch bunch of other things as well. Um, so that's been delayed to the 28th. So it'll come out then. So it's only eight, eight days from now. So everyone enhance your car. So let's take a look at it. Uh, I need to make sure that my worst window has focus. So this is the test server. So obviously, oh, I've got a thing here with my... Oh, my back, my hand, my green screen. Right, let's get it. There we go. Oh, now I've got to think that's sorted. Right, so this is a test server. So this is for um, partners. They get access to the test server so we can try this out and show you guys what the, the new stuff is. We've done this now for each of the ships. So uh, maybe you need an upgraded PP. Mine is perfectly fine. <laughs> we knew it was going there, didn't we? We knew. We knew it was going there. Uh, what do we not create? I thought, oh, they might have reset it. Create the group. Uh, connect to the private session. Okay. Green edges on the COCD. What do you mean green edges? Green edges? I can't see any green edges. Or green screen edges. Yeah, that's, it's fine though. It's because my dog lies next to it and it gradually pushes it out. So I have to keep like moving it. Uh, return to the game after like three years. I've even resurrected my carrier the boiled cabbage it's been doing that though i've seen loads of people come back it's like it's isn't it funny how when frontier do things in the game people kind of want to keep playing don't they it's weird how that works so now we're getting new ships uh, because obviously uh it's contemporary uh star citizen has had new ships all the time constantly constant new ships and everyone's like new ship new spaceship and Frontier must have been sitting there going, I don't understand with their pipe. I don't understand. How is it that everybody is clamoring over this star citizen malarkey? Yet they've moved away from us and we were here first. And the game's not even barely released yet. So then so then people are like, but but sir, sir, they they do things that we don't. Really, we have exploration. We have a, a real size Milky Way. And planets you can land on and and the entire infinite well not quite infinite but you know what i mean four billion stars what else could they possibly want well they have new spaceships sir uh, new ships so that's that's uh, that's exactly what happened uh, well i dare say we should put some more new ships into the game how many do we have well, we, we have some designs, sir. Make sure they're snake-related. We can't have anything other than snake-related things. Okay, sir. Okay. None of that nonsense with dolphins. <laughs> so, that, so that's how it works. So that's a, a recording that was uh, in the office that happened at the time. So obviously, <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> um, so I'm going to make sure that we got the thing because it's weird that it just made me recreate my uh the type eight is a snake yes yes um <laughs> all right fine okay you can have the type eight because i quite like the type nine the type seven's a bit fugly though isn't it this has got his pipe <laughs> and I, I i suppose you have precedent for that bloody type 10. right it's gonna go to the shipyard here <laughs> oh, I have that. I have, I, I, um, so Jack Little sent me, um, footage for that. 
for and the idea was going to be that i'll try to isolate the characters and, and uh, <clears throat> make it more yeah like a, a skit but the the oh connor thanks for the sub the, the problem is that it changes camera angles a lot, uh, so it's really difficult to just isolate the thing. But I did synchronize and uh, sort out the audio, so it sounds a lot better. So I'll send that back to them. I might actually uh, play it on the channel, but um, I'll send that back to them uh, so they can put that on their on their channel. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. If you haven't seen it, then uh, we'll sort that out uh, another time. So yeah, so the latest one was the Type 8. Now we have the mandalay now i have there are two versions there's the base version uh well uh, i've claimed them both and we got the shiny version which has got a very nice paint job so let us sh which one shall we see first shall we're obviously going to see them both we'll see the one which doesn't have the paint job first so we can get a really good nice look at it right you have too much cargo right frontier fix this this bit let us store our stuff with our ships why? I mean, this was a wipe safe. They moved my Ascorbius to Shin for this very purpose. So what's, what's in the cargo hold, I wonder? Uh, I haven't done anything, anything else. What have I got? Some things. Some stuff. Limpets and Alexandrite and methanol monohydrate. Why? This is the Ascorbius account, which is still in um, Colonia. <laughs> I suppose I'm going to have to sell all this nonsense, aren't I? Okay, one second. Let me just do some things. Dum de dum. Hold, please. Dum de dum de dum. Can you buy my things? Can you can you buy my damn things? Right, you sell. I don't care. Money. G give me give me get rid of my stuff. You sell. Go away. Where else have I got? Limpets. No room for limpets, eh? Right. Well, we get rid of them in advanced maintenance. So for anyone who's not sure about this, you go into here and you go to the limpet bloke here. And you go, right, advanced maintenance. Uh, can, you, uh, set, can you buy my limpets off me? So I go, all right then. What, what, what do you want? All right, there you go. You can have some money back. Right, so I don't need them. So now... Let's go back to back to the look, go into the shipyard. We're going to see the Mandalay, everybody. The Mandalay. Oh, there it is. Let's look at this one first. Right. So use the ship. Okay. So as you can see, it's very nice. So the previous stream that I did, I made a Gaussian or Gaussian splat of the render, and basically I got it to look pretty close to this. Um, so let's use the ship. Now you've probably all seen uh, all the videos by um, other other content creators as well. We're all talking about the Mandalay. We're all talking about it because it's like really exciting. It's the first um, purpose-built exploration ship, I think, because obviously everyone uses the Anaconda, uh, multi-role, the Crate and the Crate Phantom, Crate Mark II and the Crate Phantom, multi-role. But people use them for exploration. The Aspect Explorer, right, but it's multi multifunction really, just like the Diamondback, it's multifunction. You can do lots of things with it. Um, although, unlike the Diamondback Explorer, this is multi-crew capable. So, um, but yes, yeah, so the first time there's been something with features dedicated for actual exploration, in my opinion. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Type 10 is best exploration ship. It can handle the heat. It can really handle the heat. And it can do uh, fighters. And yeah, it's a good ship. But it's terrible in SCO. This ship is supposed to be, I haven't tested this yet, really good at SCO, with really good fuel management in SCO. Because that's one of the things that you'd want when out in the black when you don't have perhaps access to uh, refueling all the time. They all complained about the cockpit visibility. It looks all right to me. Let's have a look. Let's put that on. I'll turn that off. It looks alright. It's a Mamba, basically, the Mamba cockpit. Uh yeah, you've got a thing down there for your feet. Yeah, that's alright. It's not too bad. We'll take a look at it because um if you were to give some people a free chocolate cake, they'd complain that the chocolate was too sweet or not sweet enough. There's always someone. I'll be really uh oh, because it's not a bubble canopy like the NASP. 
but it's not made by Lacon. Like Lacon is the only company that that glues uh, conservatories to the front of their spaceships. The only one. <laughs> oh dear, because like even the Anaconda, which is the previous king of exploration, has like a slit. It's more like a the um, the bridge of a container ship. <laughs> no one complains about the visibility on that, do they? Oh no, I can't see. Uh, right, anywho, anywho. Right, let's take a look at it. I'll, I'm going to put it up onto the pad, which is the surface, so we can have a look. And um, people hate Asp's cockpits. Way too aesthetic. Aesthetic. I quite like them. But I like all of the ships, really. I don't think there's a single ship that I don't like. I, apart from the Anaconda. And that's only because it's just... I think it's misused. They, they made it too good in certain areas. It's a freighter. It's supposed to be a freighter. All right, look at this beauty. Oh, look at these intakes. These are nice. This is a beautiful design. So the, um, the designers uh, are really pulling out all the stops again now. Zorgon Peterson, obviously, uh, makers of the Mamba, have made this. Yeah, look at this. It's very detail-rich, isn't it? Oh, that looks sweet. Look at that. That's got a sweet bit, sweet bit of cockpit there. Some nice, smooth curves there. And I'm liking the, the paneling detailing. Uh, so the wings are nice and chunky. But look, so they've got all of their control um, stuff on here. So the thrusters are on the ends. So that should mean it's got good roll capabilities, but we'll see. I like these gimbaled thrusters at the back. So these move to a vertical position there, and then they'll move to be horizontal when in flight. I'm guessing that's with the landing gear. Look at these landing gear. Look at this. It's the, it's bow-legged. <laughs> that's pretty cool, though, because that, that actually gives a nice stable uh, footprint. That These engines are nice. I don't know what these things are. I mean, they'll probably say, yes, these are SCO stabilizers or something. It really is. It's looking really nice. Let's have a look at this on the top. So I won't take this one out. I'll go and get the one with the ship kit and everything on it so we can take a look at what that looks like. I like this canopy. This Look at that. It looks like a jet fighter from, from this angle. It's got this kind of uh, jet fighter-esque kind of look. Oh, it's nice. Are they, you reckon they're fuel tanks? Normally, planes carry their fuel in the wings, don't they? Because uh, it's easy to balance. And they, and they also use fuel for coolant, or rockets do. Right, let's go change this one up. Let's have the other one. It is beautiful, isn't it, Joey? Let's go get the other one. Because we do have access to the shiny Mandalay. Because there's always two versions that they put on for, for ARCs. There'll be the, the cheaper one. And there'll be one with a nice ship kit and paint job. And the, the one that's been tinkered with the most. Because we're going to take this out to um, Barnard's Loop. It's going to take a little bit of time to get there. The only thing I'll do to this, if it doesn't already have it, is put an SRV bay in there. So again, on the inside, it looks the same. And so far, so manually. Oh, look at that. I like that. Oh, a nice ship. I think there's one for the Mamba, the same. Show you the ship kit. All in good time, have here. All in good time. All right, so let's let's get this out onto the thing. I've just got this impression of Happy bouncing around his room like a rubber ball. Show me the ship kit! Because he, Happy does love his spaceships. If you don't know, Happy is also uh, an artist and draws um, spaceships and, and stuff like that. He's got his own channel. I don't know if you've put much on there lately, but... Um, he's, he's, he's quite the artist. Oh, look at this. So he likes his spaceships. I like these wings. It's got an X-wing kind of vibe going on, doesn't it? I like these. And it's got these, uh, are these called canards at the front? And these, kind, these kind of wings. Uh, do a, f uh, a front flu then turn on the lights? Oh, we'll do when we take it outside. Oh, I'm, I'm loving the grey, how the grey and red that nice compliment there it's got the light the light metal it's got the red and it's got this this dark metallic gray as well oh we've got to take it out now haven't we first of all let's let's see what ship kit pieces we'd get with this so let's take a look at this i'll go into the um livery and we'll see what it's got 
simply because once we're outside, we can't do that. Oh, that's nice, refreshing. Uh, yes, of course you can. You can, yeah, you can plug your art. Of course you can. Uh, okay, so we have a paint job, Seeker Red. What what other paint jobs are there? Seeker Red for now. Okay, and so in the ship kit pit, pit the ship kit bits. <laughs> uh, you want the ship now? The flight our scouts uh, have. Pr uh, pre-tested until it's out don't worry eight days you ha have to wait eight days until it's out all right so thunder thunder ship spoiler oh it's got two variants oh what's that one I me let's have a look at that i like that thunder ship i haven't got the thing i'm gonna put that one so i've got that so it's got the those wings at the back that looks very nice and we got little diddy wings if we want little diddy wings. Oh, we're going to keep these X wing wings. Ship kits bits just as bad. Don't do the. Don't do that. Don't do that thing. No. No. Uh, oh, and that's got little wingy bits. Oh, what's up? It's got extra wingy. Makes it look like a mamba. <laughs> Let's have the wingy bits. We'll keep the wingy bits on there. That looks nice, isn't it? Okay, so let's go into the outfit and want to make sure it's got an SRV bay. But we also, we, we do want to take a look at hard points that it's got. It's an exploration ship. I'm oh, sorry about that. It's, about, uh, blah, 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 blah. it's an exploration ship, so I wouldn't expect it to be amazing at combat. Uh, so the biggest uh, wet hard point side it's got is class two. But it's got four class twos. And it's got two class ones. So it's not winning any big battles, but it could get you out of trouble, I suppose. Uh, and in the utilities, heat sink, so it's got four utility slots. And in the core, it's got, um, so we've gone for lightweight alloy, an engineered power plant. So this is if you get the um, the one for arcs, it already comes pre-engineered. So what you got on that? So it has got, it's been engineered. What was the engineering? Um, it did say it was engineered, didn't it? No, it's not been engineered. That one's not been engineered. Uh, thrusters, not engineered. Ha, huh, surprising. Five A's though, so it's, it's put A rated stuff in. Frame shift drive, not engineered. Well, seeing as we're going to be taking this out to um, somewhere far, I'm going to engineer this. Uh, but it's got a, a, a class five, or size five of SCO frame shift drive built in. So we've got D rated uh, life support and um an a rated power um d rated sensors would you a rate those for an exploration build um uh, might a rate those because it gives or is that only for distance i think that's only for distance isn't it um so okay so we go into the optionals what we got so we got a 6a fuel scoop first and foremost they put the biggest damn fuel scoop that they could it's basically a ship with it's a fuel scoop with a ship welded to it. It's got an AFMU uh, to fix things so while you're out in the black. Some people run two AFMUs, one to fix the AFMU, and the because the only thing that you can't repair um, when you're out in the black is the power power supply and yourself. So I think so they run the two AFMUs to repair repair the AFMU as well because if your AFMU breaks, then you can't rep repair anything else. It already has a S SRV um, launcher. Good, good, good. And it has slots for two vehicles. So obviously we're going to put in a, a Scarab and we'll go and get the Scorpion because I love me the Scorpion. Ethnification, how you doing buddy? We've got a cargo rack for some things for your luggage. Repair limpet controller. Ooh, so you can do repairs as well so if your afmu is broken so this is for your outside isn't it so you've got your inside and then you've got your outside just slap on integrity mod and turn it off boom done what so that's a engineering thing and some more cargo advanced docking computer we don't need any detailed surface scanner good so so when we go out out into the black we can scan planets and see what we can land on and we've got the planetary approach suite. Let's put in what we've got here. So we'll get a scarab. 
and we'll get a scorpion. And we're going to paint them, because obviously we've got to paint them, don't we? Um, so I'm not going to make... Apart from, I'll do some engineering. I'll get that. I'll try and get that um, uh, frame shift drive to be a bit better. Because currently, it has got a 39 light year jump range. But I think we can do better than that. So, uh, we're, we're, oh, right. So, we do it in the engineering thing. Don't do it here. Let's go to livery. So, I want to paint my SLB. So, that's the reason we're in here to start with. So, I think I've got like a bright red to go with the ship. Standing by. Paint job. Red. Oh, it's not a metallic red though, is it? That's purple. Have I got a metallic red? What are you? Uh, I want a nice shiny red. We could go with the pulse red, can't we? <laughs> not that it bloody matters. Vibrant red. We'll go vibrant red. Uh, FMU speed repair. You can fix a single FMU reboot repair. Will get you uh, w oh one equals two percent. It will work again at one. Okay. Oh, what's this one? Stygian red. I kind of want that, but I've only got a two thousand arcs. I'm not I'm not paying for a um a pet that paint job. No, no, no. It's Stygian. I'm Stygian. Let's take a look. So I love the scorpion. The scorpion is probably my favorite. Oh, we've got the ruby anniversary. So why didn't I have the ruby anniversary for the other one? No, because I've got to buy it. No, no, no. I haven't bought anything on this account for... Uh... Damn it. How much are you? Damn it. <laughs> this is on my Ask Scorpius account. So obviously I haven't got as much because I basically stopped using the Ask Scorpius account for my day-to-day. Um, when he went out to Colonia. Right, so we're doing this. So they're painted now. So it is it is what it is. Let's go and do some engineering. I want to try and get the FSD to go further. Uh, so increase range. I should have enough mats. I hope I've got enough mats. So what is this going to get us? Uh, generate this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so obviously, of course, as well, your engineering um, outcome is now fixed. It's guaranteed now. So this should go to a third, I think. Yep, it goes to a third. So you do it three times for grade three. So it uses one uh, unit per, um, per level. So this will do it in quarters. So no more of your uh, wasting your time because obviously some of these materials are pretty hard to find uh, unless you use the trader. But then you have to you've got this lossy trade going on. Right, let's. So we're going to grade five um, this one. If we want to get the experimental effect, obviously we have to go and see the engineer proper. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to worry about that right now. So we've got grade five now engineered on that. Yeah, yeah, and they've made getting the mats easier as well. So what's this ship capable of now? If we go to this, if I go to the debris, 59 light years, uh, 55 laden. So with all your fuel and your SRV, so that's not too bad. 55 light years. <laughs> we can't even do one at the moment. <laughs> all right, so. Let's take a look at this. Let's go outside. So we're going to do an auto launch. That means I can use the camera. And let's let's get our Thunderbirds launch thing going on. Ooh, very nice. Dun, da, da, da. I want to see the landing gear go and do its thing. Off you go. Oh, look at that. They go up. The engines go into horizontal. And the oh the, the front thingy that that did its front thingy thingy. Oh, well, let's look at this from the front. I'm going to put the lights on. Oh, they're nice, isn't they? Eh? It looks like a oh, it's got the fangs. It, it looks like it's got the spitting cobra fangs. Very nice. 
So that's a nice design choice there. Very clever. Roll the ship and see what they do then. Okay. I don't think they're going to be gimballed like that, but I'll be very surprised. Right, so we get out here. And then I will put it onto um, universe mode. So if, if we go out here, I'll put it onto... They are gimballed! Oh my god! Oh, that's nice. Right, so if you can't see it, so let's get the camera closer. Right, uh, hang on. I'll put the, put the camera right next to the engines there, right? So we'll take a look at this now. I'll put it on that. So if I roll... Oh, I like this a lot. Oh, I do like this a lot. So if I want to go... Oh, so that's the wrong way around. <laughs> You've done that the wrong way around. So if you're pitching forwards, they should be down, not up. <laughs> but they're up. So I'm pulling back here. They should actually be... I think that's the wrong way around. The Type 9 also has... Yes, but it's not as uh, obvious. Yeah, somebody made a mistake with that. So when you're going up... So Frontier, bug, bug to be fixed. If I push forwards on my throttle, on, on my thing, to go forwards, the engine should be tilting down to give you that rotation. If you're pitching up like that, they should lift up to give you that rotation. So my OCD, no. So get out fix, will you? You got eight days to invert that particular rotation. I'm sure they'll fix that. Otherwise, you will trigger a lot of people. But anyway, we're not worried about that. It's a very nice looking ship though, isn't it? Eh? Isn't it pretty? This. I'm loving the metal. on Because when we first saw the design of the ship, it had got this underslung um, thing, this, this bay underneath. And it almost looked tacked on. But this does not look tacked on. This is very pretty. This is, this is totally, um, this is the nicest looking ship in the game right now. Uh, there, I said it. I've said it. <laughs> this is very nice. Right, let's see, what, see how it flies. Do the thruster gimbals work when you disable thrusters in the right panel? Okay, we're doing some science. We're doing some science. Uh, modules, let's turn off the thrusters. Should they? Are you, are you thinking because it's... Um, Where's my thrusters? Thrusters. 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 Turn them off. Thrusters offline. Okay. We're doing some science. Sciencey time. Right. They do, but the thrusters aren't moving, look. The th the th hey, Jude! What's it called? We haven't named it yet. I, I, I cunningly went outside, so I was like, oh, no, we can't name it now. We've got to... Uh... <laughs> but look at look at this. So uh, as you're moving the ship around, trying to rotate, the the engine's gimbal. This is a really nice um, effect. Although we have established that the gimbling is incorrect so far for pitch. So if I push forward, it should be aiming down. If I pull back, it should be aiming up. So they've done a boo-boo. They did a boo-boo. But it's not a big boo-boo. It's a little boo-boo. It's not Type 8 doesn't have a ground clearance for an SRV boo-boo. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, let's turn the thrusters back on. Okie dokie. Let's give this a fly. Let's see how she goes. Obviously, the thrusters have not been engineered. All right, for first boost reaction. So fly forwards. In a straight line without boosting, we're getting up to 250, 260, 270, 277, 278. Any advance on 278? So that's going in just without boosting. Whoa! That is a sound. That is a sound. Oh my god, I like I like that. <laughs> Ooh, 
let's go. Ooh, there we go. Let's see if we can do some silliness. Hipster engines! It's very nimble. It is very, very nimble. It's just going where I'm pointing it. Let's see how nimble it really is. Oh, yeah. It, I just made a split second change of direction and it went where I wanted it to. Boosting laterally does what it's supposed to. Very, very nice. Very nice ship. It can hit 580 when engineered. Yeah, so this is just A rated. These haven't been engineered at all. We've got to try it now, haven't we? We've got to do it now. Damn it! Damn it, George! <laughs> Why you do this? Now I've got to enter it, and that will give people an opportunity to tell me to name the ship. You know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? Uh oh. Yeah, better get your names in there. Use those bloody points up. <laughs> ah, you have to spend points to, to name the ship. Oh, I'm liking this ship a lot. Man delay. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, as as we always say on these things, if they found a bug, if they found something that means that they want that they need to delay it, given the um the obvious um negativity that delaying something brings with it, there must have been a good reason. So I will I will give them the uh the time. It's eight days, so it's coming out on the twenty eighth. Um so That'll be next Monday, won't it? Next Monday. Because for seven days, it'd be this time next week. So, oh, that's, that's, that is making me a bit grumpy because I would like to have it for, um, I'd like to have it for the stream. But, uh, <laughs> better man delay than never. Oh my God, Greg. Oh my God. <laughs> I kind of asked for it, don't I, really? So we've got, Mando Lay, we got Rebecca. Oh, excuse me. Um, Wintermute was first. Oh no, he wasn't. Uh, Tant was first. All right, let's let's. Oh, I don't have the thingy pinned. That's why. That's why I didn't do it. I haven't got the thingy pinned for some reason. Uh, week beginning. That oh, I've got the thingy here, so maybe it was week beginning. Let me check. I'll double check. So I've got the post here. Let's have a look. Greetings, Commanders. He's got your pipe. Following feedback on our team's observations across the Elite Partner Program early access period, we have made the decision to push the release date of Ascendancy to the week commencing October the 28th to address an NPC balancing issue and a crash instance in order to ensure the best possible experience. As the Mandalay Early Access is included as part of the Ascendancy content, this will also be pushed in line with the updated release date. We are sorry that you have to wait a little longer, but we can't wait to see how you shape the galaxy when Ascendancy is launched. So obviously, like I said before, it was a fly on the wall uh, reading of what they were trying to do. So uh, I thought I should keep that in the spirit. So yeah, so it's week commencing, so it could be at any point then, I suppose, during the week. So watch this space, I suppose. Watch the space. <laughs> oh god, I renamed the ship now to Mandalay. Because of course, Mandalay. <laughs> Dear Mandolay.
Rename the ship. And then we're going to go out to Barnard's Loop to uh, see what it's actually... Oh, I saw a thing um, the other day. I've seen it a couple of times. But um, it's, it's a, so, shouldn't Iron Man be female? Oh, no, no, no. Back, back to the thing. Mandalay, rename. Uh, take your time. If, if you, if, <laughs> with the whole Amanda Lay. Oh my god. Mando. Lay. Amanda Hug and Kiss. I'm looking for Amanda Hug and Kiss over here. <laughs> What? Rebecca by uh, Daf D D Daphne D D Muria. Last night I had a dream I went to Mandalay again. You still say Barry. Why Barry? A and anyway, channel points were spent, but it was a race. It's whoever gets there first. All right, so going to go out to... Um, we're going to go out to um, Orion. What's it? It's probably a good, good thing. If we go to Orion to start with but we're going to um barnard's loop where's the best starting point for um oh barry manilow wrote a song called mandy see you're getting like your references are all getting quite deep <laughs> so if we, if we say so I, isn't um orion the closest to us let's have a look um orion orion nebula I think that's the closest one, isn't it? To, I I love Barnard's Loop. It's my, my favorite loop because it's beautiful. Right, so where are we? So let's see. So, ah, right. If we zoom out. Okay, so we are. So the Running Man Nebula, that's pretty close. And the bubble is... It's, it's beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So there's there. Oh, it's a Witch Head Nebula is closest. So we'll go to Witch Head Nebula first. Witch Head Nebula. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. So we've got Witch Head Nebula here. So if we go to... A star like this star okay so we have fuel scoop really good one really big fuel scoop and now we can get out to um, the witch head nebula and let's just go have we packed sandwiches 19 jumps that's not far that's not bad now it's been engineered we've got this 50 something um, don't you have to go to witch head first anyway to avoid call 70 uh, I don't know. I've only been out here twice. <laughs> but it is my favourite of all the nebulas. This, this whole Barnard's Loop thing. Which is a real place. Which you can really see from a telescope on Earth. If you have a high exposure. And you're pointing in the right right place. You need to... Because it's quite faint from Earth. You can see the stars. But if you if you want the uh, to take a picture of Barnard's Loop. You need a, a really... Um, you need to get as much light in as possible. I'm hoping that uh, Down to Earth Astronomy would, would have a chat about that. Uh-oh. What have I got to explain? No, Jude. Explain Barnard's Loop. Okay. Okay. Right. Once we get outside, I'll do an explanation on Barnard's Loop. I think I did one on this, like, a few years ago. <laughs> it's a loop of shame from Barnard, is it? Slow down for auto launch. Okay, I've slowed down. Go on, off you go. Oh, we can get we can have a look at the ship while we're doing this. With with its nice, nice Oh, we did this before anyway. Uh oh. Right, with its nice paint. I do like it. Very pretty. Those wings at the back, they are my favourite. Very pretty. So, Mandalay painting when, Jude? <laughs> I 
Okay, so that, that's nice done. Uh, I always entirely fabricate the explanation. <laughs> Let's go. All right, then, as we're going in a straight line, the things that I do for you, look. All right, Barnard's Leap Explanation. During the heyday of, um, of astronomy, there was a lot of effort being put into finding new and interesting things to look at in the night sky. The stars that we thought were stars, some of them turned out to be entire galaxies. Um, and the, the puffs of um, gas that we could see that, that looked to be fairly dim turned out to be nebula, ancient nebula, that had been there for millions of years, but only recently discovered, and become the birthplace for new and interesting things like stars and planets. These nebula are sometimes light years in size. Um, which do lend themselves to to the question, what on earth made such an what made such an incredible thing, and how much devastation did it cause? But I digress. So originally, on an estate in the Victorian times, there was a man named Barnard. He was um, looking in the night sky when um, a friend of his named Harley. Um, was riding his motorcycle. They're not very fast back in, in those days, and it was powered by coal. He was riding down a hill um, and he prepared a jump and was about to try and jump the, the, the ornamental pond that was in Barnard's garden as he was looking up at the night sky. Couldn't quite see something that he knew there was something there. Harley being the uh, infinite pain that he was, was revving his coal-powered motorbike as hard as he could, getting the fires in the boiler going as quickly as possible, and then went down a steep hill to try and uh, make the ramp that he had made. Uh, unfortunately, the weight of the coal-powered motorbike was so much that when he hit the ramp, it catapulted him, but not in a straight line as he'd uh, intended to cross the ornamental pond with as I might add, some very expensive koi carp in there, which were fashionable at the time. But he instead went and did a complete one 360 degree loop in the sky, right in front of Bernard, just as he was trying to set up his telescope, leading him to raise his fists, shouting what seemed like he was shouting at the clouds. He was actually shouting at his friend Harley, who's ruined his shot. But as he looked, as he peeked deeper into the distance, as his friend plopped, into the ornamental pond, breaking a fountain, I might add. He saw something, a collection of stars that didn't quite seem right towards the belt of Orion. He then looked deeper and harder, and using the new technique of um, photography, which had uh, only recently been uh, invented, he pondered for a long time, and as the image came, got developed more and more and more, he could see a loop. Now, initially, he thought it was smoke, from the coal burning uh, motorbike to just in a circle. But the more he looked at it, the more he realized there was something there, something large, something beautiful. And Bernard quickly became famous for discovering Barnard's Loop. Of course, Harley did not get any credit because why would he? He was intending to destroy the, the beautiful, serene image that he had in his mind, a total pest. And Harley then went on to spur not with coal-powered motorbikes, but petrol-powered motorbikes for generations onwards. But this is, I hope you like this story of how Barnard's Loop came into being. Um, I hope it's explained it to your satisfaction. I thank you. Was that all right? <laughs> We're going in a straight line. Oh no. Oh no, Apti. You can only turn right. I can only turn right. Oh, right, okay, absolutely, okay. We're going into space, Apti, we're not in combat. It's, I'm turning right against the universe. I can only turn right. The rolling right and turning right. Well, I guess we're putting them gimbaled engines uh, to, into effect, into to good use. Shovel, that, that, that bloody shovel. So for those who don't know, for those who don't know, um, Apti and myself were playing a, a little known game called, um, what's it called? 
what's it company lethal company and i had a shovel in my hand and it was around halloween uh i think it was around halloween a couple of years ago a year year or so ago and uh apti was behind me behind me right i was trying to hit a pumpkin looking thing with a shovel what i oh oh no 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 all right uh so what i have to do is go right um but what i didn't realize was that if you have someone behind you and you swing back with the shovel they die if they're right up behind you um so uh now apti has never ever let me forget killing her brutally with a shovel in lethal company at the close of the day but it wasn't intended brutally murdered apti and revenge is still being sought after yes yes i know right oh dear so i'm only got i can only go right so i'm rolling right and then then i'm panning right oh dear oh dear you never will oh no some people say that you've got a uh, <laughs> a long memory right so we're almost there it's very pretty oh we are um in a exploration ship so we should be doing we should be uh, honking there we go Frame ship drive charging. all right so uh we, we've honked we haven't done any other scanning because th this system will have been explored anyway ah <sighs> What, what what time did, did, did I have to do this? So what size is the Mandalay? It's a medium. It's a medium sized ship. So uh, just like the Mamba, so it's brother or sister. Uh, it's just like that. It is a medium sized ship, but it's whereas the Mamba is good in a straight line for combat, the Mandalay is exploration focused. I must admit, it's roll speed in um, Super Cruise is very fast. Or oh, we'll get to do the SCO. We'll test the SCO out. As soon as my, my got to turn right thing is expired. Actually, we can go in a straight line here, can't we? Uh, the, the chat, uh, Alkulik, Al how are you doing? What is the max range of the new ship? Like, max engineered and with Guardian Booster. I've not put a Guardian Booster in it yet. So, um, so I've got my headlights on. Yes. I turn, I turn them on. Because uh, when you look at it from the front, it looks really cool. Uh, let's see how this looks. Oh! Where's the star? Where's the star? There it is. It's gone. Star's gone. Oh, let's have a look. So, okay, so it's not as fast as the Type 8. The Type 8 is fast. Um, but it's the heat is very manageable. And it's not using the fuel as quickly as... as so we're doing 4,000 times the speed of light now. It's got a little bit of a wobble, but it's certainly manageable. On average, I think it's still keeping you in the same direction. The heat is barely moving now. 4,200 times the speed of light, and it's not drinking the fuel. Or oh, it is a bit. It is a bit. You can see the fuel gauge on the right hand side there. Um, so you've got your your local tank, the small tank, then you've got your main tank. So, but it is using that a fair bit. But this is quick. 4,202 times the speed of light. Uh, can you turn around? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So this isn't like Star Citizen where you're locked in in place with your quantum drive. That is cool. So that's gonna make um, that's gonna make traveling across these large uh, star systems that you find out when you're exploring. It's gonna make this a lot easier, a lot uh, more time effect, uh, uh, time efficient. So you can go get that first footfall on planets that perhaps. People thought, no, that's too far. I'm just going to keep going. Let's jumpy jump jump. Uh, 90 to 91 if it's made of paper. 591 boost with a speed racer loadout. 
damn, it sucks gasoline like the American Army. If you put an SCO drive in any ship that's not designed for it, it will drink your fuel. It'll go fast, it'll be very hard to control. Um, yes, it's also good for the hut and run. Alright, so only going to go right. That hasn't expired yet. <laughs> I know what's going to happen next. She's going to say you can only go left. Or you can't go left. She's going to ban an action now. Hey, Sparks. How you doing, bud? Right, so... Good idea. No, it is not a good idea. I can just hear you, like, laughing now. <laughs> oh, let's do the honk. Twenty-six bodies in the system. Uh, have we seen them before? Oh, there's a station in here. There's no point in like doing. Anything. We've got to get out of. Um, true evil be banning scooping. No, 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 no. That is true evil. No, we can't do that because that's the basically the end of the the stream, isn't it? We won't be able to go anywhere. That'd be really boring. No, we're not accepting banning scooping thank you or jumping all that nothing that's going to get in the way of the actual what we're trying to do right <laughs> let's let's do a bit of junking as we as we go nine bodies any stations in here uh there's, oh, there's nothing in here. But I probably... We're probably not worried about this. We need to get out there, don't we? Ask the Magic 8 Ball. Should Scorch be banned from turning right? Oh, God. It's only for five minutes. All right. Oh, Magic 8 Ball. Oh, how many, how many, how many? Uh, should Scorbs be banned from turning right? Uh, it says... You may rely on it. Damn it. Frame shift drive charging. That's not fair. <laughs> so the magic eight ball is now telling me that I can't turn right. That's not fair. True evil will be having to answer back to back explainer things the entire journey. Well, I don't know who the evil's on if it's on you guys like, oh, he's doing another one. <laughs> Shovel. No. Oh. No, you don't get multiple revenges, Upsy. I'm not satisfied. And isn't that an indication of the true meaning of revenge? It's never satisfying, is it? <laughs> oh, it scoops so quickly and it's so maneuverable, even though I'm only turning right. <laughs> ah, dear. Right, we have did we do we didn't do the thing. Nine bodies, no stations in it. Uh, there's there's yeah there's uh, pl planets and bases on I think. I don't know. Let's get out there and then we can we can do our, our um, exploration around um, the Witch Head Nebula and then further out. So we'll start looking. I want I want to try and get into the heart of. Um, uh, Orion's belt with this ship and land on a planet that's really far away. If we can find one uh, which has got a really distant planet, we'll fly towards it and we'll land on it and drive around. Maybe we'll get first footfall. Whether we should get first footfalls on a test server, that's debatable. So probably won't, but at least we'll be able to show um, what you can do. Um, you have to buy arcs to start with. Um, so this ship is not going to be available until week commencing the 28th. Um, so because they've had to delay it, it was going to be it was going to be coming out um, 
I think, during the week. Um, but they've had to delay it because there's been some bugs detected. So I'd rather that they spent the time and got that right than, um, than put it out and then have the negative feedback from that. You can already see Barnard's Lupus are approaching it, see? We're heading right towards it. It's awesome. I think the last time we came out here we were with Guru, if you, if you remember that, we were, we were looking at um, stuff, like, I think Raxler-rated stuff, because Guru had a whole thing about um, Raxler and um, being out in Barnard's Loop. And I've always been fascinated by Barnard's Loop. I've always been fascinated by it. There's one nebula that you can see from basically anywhere in the bubble. And, he, and it's certainly something you can see from um, Guardian Space. And to my eyes, a, a lot of the... Oh, I'm honked. Good shout. Um, a lot of the um, Guardian ruins are in a circular shape. So that put me in the mind of they're at least basing it that from their society they could see um, Barnard's Loop in the sky. So they, maybe they built their bases that, um, around that concept. Hysteria Gaming! Taking out civilian ships, I'm figuring out, is a lot harder than I thought for this mission in Elite. Uh, yeah, because they drop mines, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they drop shock mines and things. You love a good honker. Oh. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so when this new ship comes out, everyone's going to get it. The poor Type 8 is going to be like, but I was the favourite. But well, you're not the favourite anymore because it's a new ship. This is how it goes. Python, Python Mark 2 is like, I told you, it always happens. Happened to me. I was the favourite once. And then they went back to the further lands. Uh, the loadouts. So, this is stock. So th this is, um, so there are two um, packages that you'll be able to get. One of them is the standard Mandalay, and uh, and then one is one with the ship kit and, and loaded out with gear. So 5A thrusters, AFMU, 5A AFMU, uh, 4D shield. Um, it's got a planetary vehicle hangar, a fuel scoop, 6A fuel scoop, a 5A uh, distributor, um, a 5A SCO, which I have engineered, it didn't come engineered. Um, some pulse lasers, lasers, it's only got size 2 um, weapons, uh, 4D life support, Re comes with a research limpet controller as well, as well as a repair limpet controller. And the power plant is 5A. It comes with a detailed surface scanner as well. Um, so you get, you get all the things. So it's a really nice build, actually, out of the box. Right, I did my, my thing. How many jumps have we got left? 11. We've got 11 jumps left. You never bought a Type 8 loot crap? I, I actually quite like that, that kind of industrial design, though. So it's a, it's, it's a thing. Like I've loved the Type, type 9 kind of um, industrial aesthetic. Uh, it, it feels like, you know, a working ship. You know, when you're in, even when you're multi-crewing in a Type 9, it feels like you're in something designed to just get a job done. Dirty, get the job done, out mining. It's not a luxury ship. You know, you're not going to get caviar um, served to you for your meal. It's going to, at best, be a pot noodle. Gabby! Hey, dude, Gabby! At best, you get a pot noodle, and even then, it's probably a beef and tomato one. Which, oh, I don't like the beef and tomato pot noodles. Too many angles. Not enough angles in Elite. You wanted a sleek, smooth body on the next ship I bought. Like this. Well, all ships are different, you see. And that's one of the beautiful things about this game. And there's another ship coming, allegedly. And we don't know what that is yet. We don't know what it is. I was hoping that they would uh, mention it in the... Um, in the in the stream. But I don't think they did. Right, off we go. If so, damn, it has an amazing range. Um, yes, I, I have grade five engineered it for long distance. Uh, so it's currently got a range of fully laden, like 55 light years. Um, but it doesn't have any any form of experimental effect on it because uh, um, I didn't go out to see Felicity. 
So it's got the best hidden feature speculation. What could it be? Do not know. I do not know. Um, obviously, for my money, I would like ship interiors. Um, or, or if it's something that everyone can enjoy, water worlds and um, lava worlds. I, I would love us to be able to drive. You know, if you find one of these metallic um, lava planets, it'd be really cool to be able to drive on those and for them to be heat problems in areas. How cool would it be to do SRV racing around a lava planet where you've got areas which are just impassable molten rock and then you've got these thin um, ca canyons of rock which you can drive on and your SRV is constantly taking damage. That would be cool. Uh, but we all know the next ship is, is the Moray. Do we? Did they say? Oh, we'll know if. Uh, I must learn to read. It is really quite important. Yeah, if they say it's a moray, then we'll know we'll have ocean planets. Because that'll be a beautiful... That'll be a thing, wouldn't it? Total ocean world. Uh, fly over it, and then if you fly over it fast, the water splashes up in the sides. You thought it was the gecko. Uh, you think the boa? How cool would it be? And and so if it's a new feature, Water Worlds was the feature. Uh, a new kind of SRV, which is a submersible, that would be cool. A submersible SRV, so you could go under the water and find um, wrecked, crashed mega ships. And um, I think my turning right thing has ended now. <laughs> the Cobra Mark IV. <laughs> it's already out in the game. You just can't get it. Uh, oh, is that why? Is that why we can't have them? Because they're Ian Bell designs. Ah. Uh, you prefer racing on a dead Titan, using their Xeno body as a racetrack. I mean, that's. It's a bit um, disrespectful, isn't it? I, I mean, I'm up for it. <laughs> What are you doing today? We're racing on a dead Zargoid. Just to show how annoyed we are with them. Yes, the flying sub from um, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. It would be so cool. So if there was a new type of SRV, but it was a water-based one, so the ship comes down, hovers over the water and deploys, and then there you go, down into the into the ocean. Crushing depths. So maybe that's something you'd have to worry about. So you'd have to take into account the gravity of the planet. And obviously the gravity of the planet with water on it would change the temperature of it as well, wouldn't it? Because the more gravity there is, the, the hotter the water would become from just friction. That'd be cool. I'd love to see that. And, and for there to be floating um, bases, Grippy Gecko, thank you for the raid. Come on in, everybody. Ammoni World, Sargoids in person. That could be cool as well. That, I mean, we've wanted an on foot anti Thargoid campaign for a while, haven't we? So if I pee really hard, I can set my toilet on fire. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, you probably rupture something if that's what you did because you know that you can cut steel with high pressure water and that doesn't uh... <laughs> have to come out of one hell of a lick oh my god we have revenants and banshees yeah but they're, they're just they're like skimmers aren't they set yourself on fire as well I know, Grippy Gecko. You just turn up and then suddenly we're talking about setting our toilet on fire with RP. I mean, what did you expect? <laughs> if you... <laughs> Do you find that you're setting your toilet on fire when you go for a pee? You need to call your doctor. <laughs> he sidles out to eat food. 
Look what you guys did. Oh my goodness. I have all got to go. Six jumps to Witched Nebula. So for those who've just uh, joined us, we are looking at the Mandalay. Back. So I've got the... So if, if I go to the external camera here. So I it's got this beautiful red paint job on it. It's really pretty ship. Really, really pretty. And, and it's got really, really nice... It's, so we go forwards, and then we've got to go boost. So it's got it's got the SCO drive. It's probably the most stable, fuel efficient SCO drive in the game right now. Zoom zoom! Oh, widget! Thank you for the sub. Thirty months. Thank you, mate. Uh, I'd love thicker atmospheres. Yes, that would be so cool. Uh, so many people are saying base building. Uh, what would you do with a base? I mean, having a base that you can deploy and say, I want this uh, this kind of building and this kind of building. I want it to be an agricultural base. So it puts those kind of things down. I can see that happening, but I don't think Frontier are going to allow the kind of uh, base building that... Um... What's going on here? You want to have a base of own science research or juice bar at least. Doesn't move me particularly. Uh, yeah, No Man's Sky is more for that. Which is odd, really, isn't it? Because, again, No Man's Sky, a game about exploring like billions and billions of procedurally generated uh, solar systems. So, why build a base? But then you can always. And then you can teleport between your bases. That's. I've never understood that. But. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm right. It doesn't mean that, that, like, stop stop liking things I don't like. So I, I will never be that guy. <laughs> All right, so have we done our thingy? Did we do our... I don't know if we did. 25 bodies on the... And has anybody... Well, we'd, no, we said we'd do this when we get to Witch Head, didn't we? Frameship drive charging. Yeah, so, I mean, if you could put down um, a base marker and then have and fund its construction with a fleet of ships um then that would be cool you'd have to fund its operation as well i think you did a super long stream today we're actually going to eat can we get a shout out for grippy gecko i don't think we did did we uh it doesn't automatically do it so i normally have uh connor normally does it for me Right, so let's get a... Uh... Oh, thank you. Uh, enjoy your food. Well, I'll get you a shout out to Grippy Gecko one second, please. Let me just make sure that I'm not going to uh, crash into the star. Uh, da -da -da, I think it's exclamation mark S-O. I uh, don't know where Jan is, actually. And is it going to be Grippy Gecko? Let's see if that works. Yay, I did a thing! <laughs> I did a thing! I can do things! Uh, we're expecting a No Man's Sky update this week. Well, if we do a No Man's Sky update, maybe we'll do that next Sunday. That's what it is. If there's a cool new feature, then we'll do it. You're welcome, Grippy Gecko. You're very, very welcome. Oh, uh, Gabby's here as well, so let's do a shout-out for Gabby as well. Four, three, two, there you go. Uh, so, oh, doing scary games again. Uh. Right, so, yeah, so we're, I don't know where Jan is actually at the moment. But there's normally a good reason if Jan's not here. Right, so let's do a bit of fuel scooping. This is so easy to fuel scoop in. You know, it's not like uh, the Diamondback, which you feel like you're just scooping, constantly scooping, and it takes ages. I think because it's got a really big tank. Uh, so, oh, so it's that. Four jumps, four more jumps. Frameship drive charging. So when we get there, we'll plot our route into the heart of the... Um... Yeah, it has a size six fuel scoop. That helps. I mean, it helps. <laughs> It is basically a ship built around a fuel scoop. 
What's that? Uh, that raid slid my explainer thing for gravity. Oh. <laughs> I'm dead. So what was it? I didn't see it. I'll have to do the thing. Gravity. Let me see. Where is it? Uh, explain a thing. Gravity. You want me to explain gravity? I have done gravity before. Okay. I shall attempt to explain gravity as as I as I fly to the next place. All right. Oh boy. Gravity is a thing that many people don't understand how it works because it seems an ever-present force is constantly pulling on every object in the universe um even to a small amount distant objects thousands of light years away still have a non-zero impact on you so it it never fully drops off and the reason why gravity works in the first place um, it is not a well understood reason, but it is, I think, the best explanation for gravity is tiny, tiny um, bends in, the, in space time. Because we don't just have time, we don't just have space, we have space time, and they are connected in, at, at a fundamental level. And every single piece of mass in the universe, in some small way, bends space time. When you have a lot of it together, that amount of bend is amplified. Now, the, the reason why gravity works on any sized particle, uh, be, because if you have got so, something traveling in a straight line, things always want to travel in a straight line, always, unless energy is put to them from to, to alter its direction. It's always going to go in a straight line. The thing is, when you bend space-time, that straight line bends towards the the dent in space-time and this happens to even single atoms uh, because um a thing that is uh, they're all made of multiple components anyway and they're all equally uh, attracted they're all they're all on their little journey aren't they so if, if you have got two atoms together like um let's say you have a lump of rock that rock is made of lots of different atoms, right? They're all being individually pulled differently based on their proximity to the to space-time. So you've got this little guy here is going on his straight line, but he's his line has been curved ever so slightly towards the um, the curve, and and then you've got this guy whose whose um, bond is stronger than that of gravity, uh, or right. He's trying to go in his straight line as well, so he's also being pulled towards the, um, the 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 gravity well by his buddy, and it's ever so tiny, uh, ever so tiny changes in direction, but it's there. And the more mass you have, the more the more the effect is. Matter attracts matter, so as you are being attracted to the the object, the object is also being pulled towards you. Where in, in so the distance between you and the heavier object is averaged between the two based on your masses. So you pull on the Earth as much as the Earth pulls on you. Just if you didn't know that, but uh, it's a tiny, 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 tiny amount. Anyway, I need a diagram. I have a drawing board. <laughs> but uh, yes, but gravity is it's a um, it's not a force. It's not a particle or anything like that. It's simply a. a a symptom of mass bending space-time so there you go i hope this explains gravity to some level not a scientist but i hope it explains in some level that is my understanding of gravity i hope i hope that helps <laughs> oh dear oh we need to scan we haven't done a scanny thing so when i fall it's as much the earth's fault as it is mine <laughs> yes yeah well, I was doing fine until the Earth came up to meet me. <laughs> Does this mean that I'm at least attracting the Earth? Maybe I won't end alone. No, mate. Gravity and pubs go hand in hand. <laughs> or pint in a... Yes, so if pubs attract you, um, then then that's yeah, it's because of gravity. So that's the weak force explained. <laughs>
Mm. Not as not a scientist though. It's basically based on uh, science explainers who have explained it, and and I've grasped the thing. We're all attractive after all, absolutely. And uh, look how beautiful this this nebula is. Yeah, gravity's not particularly a particularly strong uh, force. The explanation was pretty good for people to understand. Oh, thank you. See, sometimes I do silly ones. Sometimes I try my best to. If, if there's a real explanation that I do, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, then I'll try and do the right thing. I could I could have just said it was lots of tiny um, leprechauns pulling it down. Uh, did we do the scanny boopy thing? The force is strong with this one. Yes, gravity is not a force. It is it is a um, an end result of something. It's a symptom. So sadly, unless unless you can, um, so there's not not going to be any graviton guns and things like that because gra a graviton isn't a thing. Returning from a quick break, you see a lot of people using the ship and a new forklift-looking one. A quick rundown of the two. So the forklift-looking one is a Type 8. That's a um, that's for your um, engineer, not for engineer, your industrial type things. So it's a cargo runner. It's a very fast cargo runner, and it's it's pretty good for mining as well. So if you are doing like mining operations and you want to get your precious minerals back to a station as fast as possible without being interdicted, you use a Type 8 because it's got the fastest, um, most stable, at the cost of fuel, but um, SEO drive uh, in the game. It's insanely powerful. Um, it's not the biggest uh, mining vessel or doesn't have the most hard points, but if, if you need to get in and get out, then, then it's really good for that. I, I love the design for it as well. It's I, I quite like that that um, grungy kind of industrial aesthetic. I really quite like that. And then this new ship, the Mandalay. This is um, an exploration vessel, which uh, its primary focus is being able to jump really far, and it's got a really efficient SEO drive. So you don't use as much fuel. You hardly generate any heat, which is amazing. Because all of the other SCO drives in the game generate tons of heat. So the Python Mark II, that was the first one that came out, which was SCO capable. Uh, that generated heat. You had to uh, pop off heat sinks for that. Uh, and it went in a pretty straight line, but it w wasn't perfect. But it used a ton of fuel. Um, the, like if you put an SCO drive in any other ship, like a normal ship, it will work. And you will get that benefit of being able to um, use your, you know, get get to distant stars pretty quick. SCO, if you're not aware of SCO drive, I shall demonstrate. I love doing this. Right, see this ship. This is this. So this is a new Mandalay. It's very pretty, very pretty ship. You see that big unit there, right? That is a star. Mandalay, star. Now Mandalay is currently close to star. All right, let us position this here. Right, it's close to star, and we're going to go away from star. <laughs> so what you can do normally is fly in a straight line. So this is the normal speed. However, that's not good enough. Let's freaking go. Onwards, buttercup! <laughs> so we can get quite some speed now in Super Cruise. So currently... 3,000 times the speed of light currently heading towards this nebula. 4,000 times the speed of light. And we have no sense of showing, of slowing down. <laughs> FSD boost uh, note for cruising. It is amazing. It is amazing. Uh, if I take my hand off the controls right now, you can see it's moving. It's drifting around a little bit. So you have to compensate for that a little bit, but this ship just does it. It's just brilliant. If you stick an SCO drive in a, a normal ship, like say um, an Asp Explorer or a Type 7 or something like that, they 
generate loads of heat and they wibble about like like this like you're constantly fighting the thing because they weren't designed for it but you can do it you can do it i am hoping for some engineering that will reduce that a little bit and make it so that you can actually do that and the ship is not exploding absolutely look the heat hasn't gone up like as you can see there normally that heat will be going wah, wah, wah. so um so you learn how to drive your anaconda with the boost but this is cool yeah like i'm still still going i haven't i haven't at all my fuel it's it's not burning through it it's not burning through my hull or my heat sinks scorpius is SEO to drive to explain a thing content no more explain a things please it's this shit right this almost feels like what's the point in coming out of SCO mode? What's the point? Right? <laughs> oh, where's the Oh, we're in a gravity well. Where have I got to go to? We're here. We're in the Witchhead Nebula. Okay, so this is So we didn't we didn't do our scan, did we? Right, so there's 18 bodies in this system. So and this is this is the you know the place where you come into the Witchhead Nebula. So this is, will have been scanned by everybody. But let's take a look. Um, right, so let's go into here and let's see what there is. So there is some. What are you? What are you? I'm actually, quite <laughs> because I, because I just jumped really far away. I think I'm too far away from things. Where where is the the plane? I've gone too far. Oh no, I jumped. I, I did honk. I can see things. But I'm too far away from them. Oh well. I guess we won't be doing anything in here. So the next thing that we're going to go to, we're going to try and find our way into um, the Witchhead, in, into Barnard's Loop, right? So here we are inside of, well, there's Barnard's Loop there. Way, get back there get back there we want to get into now to the orion nebula i think let's get to the orion nebula uh, uh, uh. orion not orin orion nebula oh that's the orion dark we're not quite ready for that yet orion nebula Ryan Nebula. There we go. I'm going to try and get in here. Makes you makes you want to do a flight from Earth to uh, the closest star system. Uh, I don't think that's actually going to work. So it doesn't load it. Uh, it won't actually load the next system. Someone has done that and flown from one really close system to another, and there was just nothing there. Right. Let's go to Titov. All right, so we'll go there. Twelve jumps away. So from um, so from the Witchhead Nebula to here it is twelve jumps. So we'll we'll have a look and see if there's any anything we can find along the way because we're basically doing some exploring now. That would be cool, but yeah, that's not how Elite works with the engine. Yeah, unless they make a change, unless they do a thing where it unloads. You're too you're far enough away from the last star system that it unloads it and then it loads the next one. But it's such a rare edge case, I doubt that they would do it. Uh, no, you need to have, yeah, you need to have the, the hyperspace jump. So where are we? Right, so we're heading towards the, uh, the Witchhead Nebula, towards uh, Orion Nebula now. Witchhead, to, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. 12 jumps to get there. Um, so all I did with this um, this drive was I engineered it to grade 5 for long range. That's it. I didn't do anything else. So it hasn't got uh, any experimental effect on there. Hey, Gary. Hey, doing, bud? So I didn't do anything else on there. So it's just... Um, um, was it size 5? I think it's 5A uh, FSD. Yeah, 5A fsd with grade 5 um long range mod on there and it gives me it gives me a 56.7 light year jump range that's pretty good isn't it 
Oh, this is great. This is great for exploring. Really, really comfortable. Uh, we regularly get fuel cases for people trying to super cruise into the next system they have insufficient fuel for hyperspace jump. <laughs> How do you get to them if they run out of fuel? I guess have a bigger fuel tank. Oh yeah, Terrakov has, has been a been a rap for ages. Alright, let's get there. Alright, let's Ooh. Where's my thingy? Discovery scanner. Honk. Now there, there are some um permit lock systems around here. There's it's like some some parts of Barnard's that you can't get to. I wonder if they're going to start unlocking some of this stuff now. So, okay, so let's see. Can we... If I go up on the galactic plane a little bit. Or, well, it's not the galactic plane. Although it kind of is the galactic plane. But it's like the solar system. If I go up in the solar system, then I'll use my dinghy. So I should now be able to see things. I got I can't believe how far away I was last time. That guy, what are you? You are a high metal content world. Uh don't know if that one's landable though. Is it landable? It might be. What are you? Uh, a rocky body, just like mine. Oh dear. Said no one ever. Uh, another high metal content world. At least it's not beige balls all the time. Like it used to be. That's just another beige ball. Oh, this is signal sources, I think. Uh, non. Non human signal sources. Thargoids out here. Listen to that. There's Sargoids out here. I guess there would be, wouldn't there? We are not far from... Um... Is there a fight going on in there? The Goids are everywhere, man. You come across them in the weirdest places. There, there are Guardian um, places out here as well. There's a planet out, out here... Um, which has got, like, I think, crashed Thargoids and um, a Guardian base. Like, some bad happened around here. Uh, that's pretty. It looks like a big potato. Have we got everything? No, there's two more. Right. What are you? Another high metal content. This one has got an, it's got an atmosphere. We can't land on that one, I don't think. I don't think we can land on that one. Because it's I think the atmosphere is too thick. Oh, what's there? Something. Uh, uh is that it? No. There's one more thing. Looking for the telltale blob. So it's whatever this is. Where are you? It must have been nearby where the thing is. Or oh, if it's Waterworld, that'd be so cool. I really want to go and fly over Waterworlds. How cool would that be, eh? In my Moray starboat. Aha! Aha! Found you. Ammonia World. Ooh. Shall we go see that? Let's go and see that. Right, so it's over here. As we're in the system, you know, may as well. Uh, it's not too far away, but using our super duper boost, the boost we can get there really quick. Whoa, overshot. <laughs> That's the danger of this. 
Never mind. We're almost there. Almost there. How far is KK Ar Aranis? I do not know. Um, some Lagrange clouds, mineral spheres. Uh, hey, Infwell. Uh, I don't. I don't know how far that is. There's a planet. There is a planet. So I wonder if this is why the Stargoid activity in this place, because this is a, an ammonia world. Let's have a look. So there will be an exclusion zone around this. We won't be able to land on it. They're very pretty, though. <laughs> yeah, anything that's got... Basically, anything that's got clouds, like those cyclones, I think they are currently textures over the planet. Anything with those you can't land on, for sure. Nice though, isn't it? Can I scan it? Where is my surface scanner jobby? Alright, so let's there's one. That should get it around the back. Oh, it's actually not bad, is it? Half a twenty-three percent. So if I get over here. So about there. Going about here. About there. I think. There's a pretty brown marble. What are we looking at here? Did I not get one around the other side? Oh, that's the miss. Oh, that's a bad miss. Surface scanned by 50%. If I get around the other side, then I might be able to get um, this with four, five, maybe. Ooh, 75. Ah, 75. Let's see. Let's get you around there. So my new video came out uh, so just under two weeks ago. Um, it's currently sitting at 1,600 views. Uh, YouTube has stopped recommending it to people. Because it does that. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. Uh, let's try that one. We're, we're over the thing now. But so far with the comments that it's been getting, people have been enjoying it. So I hope you like it. Oh, we're getting a bit close. Getting close. Come on. 77, 78, 79, 80. 80. Ah, getting close. We're getting closer and closer. 81. 82. 83. Damn. What am I missing? We're going to have to stop, are we? Because <laughs> we're, we're getting a bit close to the exclusion zone here. Oh well, not overly worried about not scanning that completely, but or am I? Yeah, kind of is playing chicken with the planet because I'm moving ever so slowly. Let's get some distance. Yeah, I do wish that uh, YouTube would. It always favours a particular type of content. Uh, and it could be argued that it's not because YouTube is favouring it. It's that that's what the audience likes. It could be argued that. You know, I'm not precious about this stuff. I just It's just disappointing is all. Nine impacted. Yes. Let's see if I can get that. It's a bit disappointing when, um, when YouTube just not s serving it up. But they serve up other things. Like, I looked for one AI video, right? One. 
to look because to, I want to do something to speed up my filmmaking process. So I'm looking at um, face swapping AI. So if I have some CGI lip synced um, footage and I then um, overlay that on game footage, hopefully an AI would be able to say, oh yeah, I can see what you're doing there. I can match the face and speed up my process because that last video took five months to make. And a lot of that is, you know, scenes inside of cockpits. So it's not too hard. You know, I've already got all the models for for that, so I can lip sync a character. That's not too hard. But it's all the all the extra stuff as well that, that's in that video. I am making a right mess of this. I'm going to call this off as a bad job in a minute. Ah, because I'm also again drifting towards the planet. I'm just going to leave this one. Uh, but if if I want to do an episode which is heavily gameplay focused and black holes, thank you for the follow. If I want to do a video which is heavily gameplay focused, just like one that I've got currently in production, lots and lots of game footage, lots and lots of people running around. I don't want to be doing head replacement. I am not a Hollywood studio. I cannot spend that time and I don't have the tools for it either. So it's one of them things. So uh, I'm going to jump to the next system. So if I can speed my process up by getting an AI to think about things instead of me doing it, then I will. But it might be that the next episode uses uh, another type of lip syncing, and it won't be at, I won't be using the normal type of animation. At the end of the day, I just want to tell a story. So, Adab, how you doing, buddy? Uh, combine all the previous videos into a three-hour anthology. You'll get served up to anyone watching Elite Vids at sleepy time. <laughs> I've thought about that, you know. I have thought about that. I, I did that for um, uh, the one, not last year, it was the year before. It's been that long, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I had that three-parter and I put that into one supercut. Um, the problem with like my older videos is they're all in 720p as well. So I'd have to AI upscale them. And I I look at them and I'd, the quality is not the same. So it bugs me i see i only see the mistakes and the glitches you see that's that's the thing but then again i suppose everyone who's creative only sees the mistakes one body and that's the star but nothing to see here move along we have got 10 more jumps to do drive charging. yeah but i want to put more content out there i want to do more videos um, but just so you all know, I am I am uh, going to be picking up again, working on a game that I'm uh, writing. Um, so using a voxel-based engine um, to to uh, remake an ancient game from the, the 1980s on the Sinclair Spectrum. Uh, so you'll get to see that um, pretty soon. So that will be. No, it's not Utabox too. That was so much fun to make you fuck to us. Uh, but it's it's a um, it's a two D platformer, but it's written in a three D engine, uh, which has um, full. It's ray traced. The whole game is ray traced. So I'm literally taking a game which ran at, the resolution was uh, two five five by one two eight. Uh, because the top third of the screen uh, is just a, a status bar so you've got 128 pixels by 255 pixels uh platformer and putting that into so it's the lowest tech possible using a maximum of eight colors in blocks of eight by eight uh, so it's really hard to make something look good so i'm taking that and going i'll, I'll give this an incremental improvement and gone full voxel ray traced global illumination reflections everything i've redone all the animations so they were just was just a man running like that i've remade him in 3d as a 3d object meticulously placing blocks in 3d space to make this work I, i'm insane i think i'm insane but uh so i've already spent ages on this <laughs> so i will have something to show for it 
Um, but there's an update to the engine that I'm using, which broke something. So, but the developer is really on it. So at the end of this month, he, he's going to have an update to it, which fixes everything and adds way more features. It's going to be so cool. And as soon as I've got something to show you, I will show you. But my plan is to start remaking really old video games in, like bring them up to life. It's like, what happens if you turn RTX on on Treasure Island Dizzy? Although I can't do that because Codemasters are really, really uh, on it with their... I've got to be really careful because some games publishers, some, some uh, companies are still very protective of their ancient IP. Ancient, right? So some games... Um, you can't download even for the Spectrum. Like, uh, I know Codemasters didn't want you downloading any of their stuff. So you can't legally download Fantasy World Dizzy or um, BMX Simulator 2. You can't get them online. You have to own them and then digitize the tape. We need a game uh, where whatever can go wrong will go wrong. And then call it You versus Murphy. That's a good idea, actually. Because especially, especially because the um, everything in the in the voxel world can be destroyed, and it's got a full physics system. You've seen Teardown, right? You've seen that game, Teardown, where you can basically smash, burn, destroy everything, right? It's using a similar technology to that. You know, you can throw grenades, and they will destroy um, bricks based on their material properties for the pixel that you hit. So you can have bricks that are, um, are connected by cement. The cement will be weak, so bricks will just fall out. You can have that. I uh, can't remake Elite. Although I, d I do have um, a program that can take a 3D model and generate a voxel model out of that. So you can do that with elite ships, but the ones that I've done it with, they just come out as blobs because a lot of elite ships are just featureless blobs unless you texture them. Uh, what's in here? Oh, let's let's get to ticked off. Jet Set Willy, Manet Miner. Uh, they were great games. Uh, I think Jet Set Willy. Oh, sorry. I think Manet Miner gets way too much press. I'm, I'm sorry. It's never really never really got me it was too weird and uh, yeah Jet Set Willy's the same you've got really weird um, creatures going backwards and forwards like toilets with the lids going up and down like that it's like it's strange but that was the thing at the time so like Monty Mole as well it's very similar uh, Qbert Hey, Ghost them, John. Destined for humanity. Praise the far god. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got a believer, everyone. Uh-oh. Well, I'm out in their space right now. <laughs> you don't have a spectrum. I've ordered um, the, the new retro um, remake spectrum. It should be arriving fairly soon, actually. I ordered it uh, a couple of months ago. So I'm hoping it will arrive soon. It's got full rubber keys and everything. But it's got HDMI um, out and USB for um, per connected peripherals. Paperboy would be good. Got to be careful with some of these, you see, because they are um, arcade conversions. So people uh, who own the arcade machines, they will still have the rights. And also, Paperboy was converted by a company called Elite. And they are another company that are really possessive about their copyright and have taken all of their games off download sites like World of Spectrum, things like that. Dead Flesh Keyboard lives! <laughs> yes, the Dead Flesh Keyboard. <laughs> God. But yes, the Sinclair Spectrum was my childhood. So it's um, it's kind of fitting that... Oh, it's just got three stars. Okay. It's kind of fitting that I would bring uh, an old game from those days that, that my brother and I used to play when we were kids... Um, back to life um, give it kind of a modern look and feel but I want to try and keep the as much of the original game as possible but obviously improve on some things because it wasn't particularly well received because it was just too damned hard that was the thing with like Spectrum games 
and certainly games for all home micros at the time they were really hard super hard you'd have three lives for something and then it'd it just be so bloody hard kids today think their games are hard no <laughs> They'll never play Treasure Island Dizzy where you get one life to beat the whole damn game and you go through every puzzle and get right to the end where you've put the dehydrated boat in the water next to the man and you jump in it thinking this is it, I've done it and you fall right through into the water and drown because you needed to add an outboard motor and then you needed to do some other stuff as well <laughs> It's like why? And then, so you die no save states on an original spectrum either so you have to go back to the menu restart the game do all again all of it go fetch all the things get all the coins Ugh. you've got uh three items possible in your inventory uh one of those is going to be a snorkel and that's the only way that you can get underwater so if you pick something up under the water and your snorkel is at the top of your inventory you will drop your snorkel and drown <laughs> it's like what oh so i don't know if any of you in, in chat have ever played treasure island dizzy uh it was a thing later games gave you lives because mistakes happen <laughs> right let's see what's in here in this system uh let's see it says 16 bodies let's see what we got we've got some planets uh, ZX81, uh, oh, bloody ZX81, had a, had a RAM pack which gave it 16k, and it was, if it wobbled, it would reboot. That's the star, isn't it? Oh my goodness, what's in here? An icy body, don't remind me of <laughs> yeah oh we also had uh so the sinclair spectrum also had a so if you wanted a joystick plug in like say you wanted a kempston joystick you had to put um an interface card into the back on it was an io slot do not do that while it is powered i learned that the hard way around a friend's house i destroyed his spectrum doing that it was an accident but i i, I took it out while it was still powered up and that was the end of it. It was really quite grumpy with me. So that, like we were kids, you know. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know. Oh, what's this? Uh, it's three biologicals on this one. Ooh, what's on there? It's got vanadium. And oh, this is a good planet. Okay, we'll go there. We'll see what the biologicals are. And let's go back. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh no, wrong button, wrong button. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so what else do we need? So stuff over here. You can tell because it's got this like a blue hue to it. Oh, Commander Sinclair! We're just talking about you. <laughs> in a way how are you doing uh you have a zx tune app on your mobile so you can listen to any old ch chip tune music ah oh, so i used to love that i'm a big fan of chip ch chip tune music right that's all of that stuff yeah big thanks it it's basically making music with uh, very, very limited equipment. Uh, so, like, one of my heroes in in the 8-bit music um, genre is a, a chap named Tim Follin. If you're aware of Tim Follin. Uh, he did so much music. Uh, and, like, he... Uh, him and his brother wrote... Um, music for some some games like there was a meme on the internet uh, like uh, in, in these circles like tim no it's just a video game because he go, his tunes always go so hard like he did the theme for pictionary and and it was like it's just bloody pictionary 
Yeah, he wrote some amazing music for it. Way better than the game had any right to be. It was insane. But he did music for things like Bionic Commando. And um, it was brilliant. But uh, before before he had his hands on the, uh, the Spectrum 128's sound chip, because that actually had a three-channel sound chip, he was writing using the beeper. So the Sinclair Spectrum had a beeper. And you could make it just make a beep sound at a particular frequency um, for a particular duration. And that was all it had. So it didn't have anything else. Yet Tim Follin managed to make it do chords and different volumes and phasing and things. It's like, how? How did you do that? And it turns out that the way that he did it was by setting the... Um, turning on the beeper and then turn it off very quickly. And then changing frequency very quickly. So you get all of these quieter notes and then louder notes and then you'd have be able to build up the volume and stuff. It's incredible. And when he did that, he was 16. 16 years old he was when he was doing that. I'm like, what was I doing when I was 16? It's probably not stream friendly. <laughs> so when he was 16, him and his brother were writing routines in machine code on the Sinclair Spectrum to play multi-polyphonic uh, tunes with drums, with bass, with effects, phasing and flange and stuff like that. He was 16! <laughs> God! Oh. You know when you, you look at like people and they just make you feel inferior in every single way? Uh, thanks, Tim. Thanks for that. Yeah, bugger. <laughs> I think I have uh, set a thingy there now. Let's go out. I think, yeah, set this planet. I'm going to have a look at it. Also, Future Games on the Spectrum was awesome soundtrack. I didn't play that one. Oh, no. It's 47,000 light seconds away. What will I do? I know. 47,000? Tis nothing. Onwards! Onwards! Damned overachievers, yeah. <laughs> 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 30, 29. Oh my god, it's, we're getting there, getting closer, getting closer. Uh, oh, stop! <laughs> You can't take any more, Captain. <laughs> hey, Alexander. <laughs> so it's now 2,000 light seconds away. Oh, it's on overshooting. Not today. Although I did earlier. <laughs> uh, it already is now. You take a Type 8, put an additional fuel tank in it, you'll get to hot in no problem. Yet I overshoot doing normal speeds. What is wrong with me? Super zoom zoom mode. Xbox Lunar, how you doing? Oh my god, I'm making such a mess of this. Such a mess. Come on, slow down, spaceship. I want to go down on a planet and see what's down there. I can drive my scorpion tank around. Because I want to see this land. I want to see how easy this is to land. Because this is the other thing. This is an exploration ship. Dedicated design for exploration. One of the design features is that it's, you know, it's got a small ground footprint. Let's land right slap bang in the middle of that crater, shall we? It's the first time I've landed on a planet with this. So, uh, so as well though you know it should should be easy to get your srv out and it also faces the direction that you've landed um other ships i don't know if you've noticed but the srv comes out backwards it faces the other way uh it's a 5a frame shift drive in, in this one. Oh, look at that it's got an atmosphere and everything this is pretty this is going to be really pretty you can take a really good Landing is a feature. 
yeah, tell that to the Type 8. Tell it to the Type 10. It's like, hang on a minute, lads. It's going to be a while. <laughs> it's like tr trying to get... You don't so much need, uh, you know, landing clearance to land. You need planning, pu pu planning permission to put down a warehouse. <laughs> it's so big. Like, the Type 9 and Type 10 are so big. But this should be good. It's supposed to come out facing forwards, the SRV is. So, so they said. But we'll see. <laughs> People living there looking up. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Scorbs. You can tell because he missed at least three times. Uh, it's supposed to be better at Atmo. Let's take a look, shall we? Right, so this is the ship. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. Oh, look at that. Look at how that light is bouncing off the, the metal paint there. Very nice looking. And something that I hadn't noticed before. Let's put this on uh, ship mode. I'll put that on that mode. And we'll do... Ooh. Put it on ship mode. And... Look at the gimbal link. I love this. The engines wibble about. It's so cool. Oh, that boost sound never gets old. I'm trying to fly, not hit the ground. No! Don't hit the ground. That would be bad. That would be bad. Right, let's see if we can find a place to land. We're in the middle of this crater. Like, have, like it rolls really fast. Oh! Just, just, see my shadow there? Whoa! Let's get up! up, 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 up. Hey, there we go. These engines. We don't need the night vision on. Let's get out of this little thing into the. So, if we if we so these are A rated thrusters, but if we'd gone grade five uh, dirty drive with drag drive effect, this would be super fast. I'm going to get over there, and we're going to get into an SRV. So we'll see how easy this thing is. Want to park? How is? is? Right, let's park over here, right? Let's park. Landing you down. Let's see how this parks. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing auto land so we can see um, what it looks like when it comes down. So the engines go into their um, low down position. And they gimbal around to get them moving around. This is so cool. So these... See what I mean about the... Um, Oh, plants! Right, see what I mean about the uh, the landing gear? It's it's really quite close, so it's not going to be so hard to find... Um, not really. To, to, to find a, a, a place to set down. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping now that we'll come out here and be facing forwards. That's the plan. Cool looking thing, though. I'm going to get into a... Scorpion. Uh, right, so it's out week commencing the 28th. Oh, it's facing backwards. They said it would be facing forwards. Okay. I guess that makes sense in some ways because to face backwards, face forwards, the first thing you would hit would be the landing gear. So it brings you out behind. I, so, yes. Yeah, so maybe that was my misunderstanding. Disembark us forwards. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That makes sense now. Right, let's see if we can get through here. So we're in the Scorpion tank, which is an Odyssey-only vehicle. It's, it's heavier. A lot heavier than the Scarab. 
So it's not as maneuverable. What is this? What have we got here? Weird plant things. Some mushroom looking things. What's that over there? And the, the scorpion can climb almost vertical surfaces. Right. So, I th oh, thanks for clearing that up for me, guys, because I thought it was a berg. Because we already found a berg today. And how the gimbals work when you pull up and, and pitch up and down. Electrical tree thingies. Electrical tree thingies. Let me. Oh, let me change my loadout so that I don't. New loadout, split the base suit. Oh, thank goodness. Artemis suit. I thought I hadn't got one. Is it the Artemis suit that I need, which has got the science? Yes, that's what I want. I'm not going to bother with any cosmetics. Save that. Uh, loadout is going to be called Lanty. Because why not? Yeah, I just found it. Just like, just, to, just, just there. Right, so use this loadout. Back. All right, so now we're going to disembark. Right, so I'm out of the scorpion tank now. What is this thing? First footfall? No one's been here before. What are these? These are cool looking. Oh wow, they, they, they do have like a force field around them. Oh weird. Let's see. Uh, is it that one? That's the one. No, not that one. I want, I want the Dyson looking thing. There we go. All right, it's dangerously low temperature. Right, so I've got, oh yeah. Electric radi radium, radium blue. Okay, so we need to go and find, there's some more over there behind the ship. Okay. Board this, we'll go in there, we'll do this. That's cool. Uh, what does it need a force field for? Yeah, it's a very good question. What has it done? Right, where's my ship? My ship is there because I saw something over here. Might not be far enough away. Oh, this is a heavy, heavy thing. Really heavy. But this is 47,000 light seconds away. So... People have been here. I swear people have been here. But they probably thought... Uh, they probably thought, I'm not going all the way over there. It's too far. But for what? You know, That's mushroomy thingy. So where's the electric tree? Electric tree over there. 800 meters. Let's see if this is far enough. So there's a way to find out. So we get out again. I think we do a right click and scan. I think we I need to have the thing in my hand. Yeah, I can't scan that one. It's too close. Not enough bio um, diversity, you see. Let's get back in. So we're at 322 degrees. Let's go keep going up on this basic heading. Stop me from going in circles. I'm sure we'll find something. Mushroom thingy. Oy. See anything? Whoa, come on! 
This thing does not fly. Normal scarab flies. These things, not so much. Sorry. Oh, you've been here for millions of years. Never seen humanity before. And I come and drive into a mushroom. Sorry. And then I reverse into another one. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Accident. Accident. Loads of these mushroom dudes. Where's the electric tree? There. Something over there. That looks like an electric tree. <laughs> happy. Alright, this should be far enough away, shouldn't it? Alright, let's go and take a look. Drive assist off. Uh, so, what I'll probably do is dismiss my ship. Oh yeah, can scan this one. This one's fine. Right, scan, scan, scan. Scanny, scan, scan, scan. Uh, there's no... So on the Scorpion, no, there's no scanner for um, finding rocks and things. So if you're going explore, exploring, it might be a good idea to take one of each. Right, so where's my ship? I'm going to dismiss it. Uh, so that then when I want to get on board, it's a lot easier to just call it down. And it will also show how easy it is for it to find a place to land. Um, ship, ship, ship. Dismiss. Ship dismissed. Right, so now we'll go and find another one. So on the right kind of thing. You never notice. Yeah, so, so there's no... Along the top. It's just a normal scanner for finding targets, but not for finding materials. Which I have no problem with. Like this, I, I I like the idea that they both these SRVs have got different features. I just wish there was more of them. I, I wish there was more like in the uh, EDRPG where you got like missile launchers on some SRVs and all sorts of stuff. Or how about a flying SRV based on skimmer technology? I don't see any reason why not, unless it was engine based. But, you know, we got people like Alec Turner who can make these things fly anyway. So, they may as well give us a flying SRV. If nothing else, it'll give us a fighting chance against, against Alec when he does something. Oh, oops. What's that? So, SRV with one, the size one hard point. Oh, that you can fit out with anything, yeah. Right, if you want to put a railgun on it, why not, right? <laughs> Sight is crumbling. Oh, God. See, this is why we can't have nice things. Everyone's... Although, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Like, so there you are flying your ship, and you've got someone with an SRV locking down some of your units on your ship. That would be really cool. Especially if we get, if we do get like base management, um, so you know we can pay to have like hangars and things in a base. And so we make it our own. Uh, you know, so you have your home base and you can do all sorts of things from there, like like a fleet carrier kind of thing. Only it doesn't move, and then defend it against NPCs or against players by disabling their ships so that people don't come near the base. They would be indestructible, obviously, but um, but the players aren't. Maybe that's the new feature. I don't know. Hopefully they, they, hopefully they will um, work out how to do this in a neat way. Right, where is the next electric tree? There's mushrooms over there. Where are you, electric tree? 
What's this? What this? I don't know if you've noticed, although this is a very, very, um, yeah, this planet's very rocky. It's not good terrain, but you don't spin out as much as you do in the Scarab in this. It's because it's a lot heavier. It's a lot harder to dislodge, I suppose. Right, I'm going to cheat. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, so I'll set it on that mode and stabilize the camera. So now we can do it like this. And I'll be able to get... There they are! Over there in the distance, see? Electric tree! <laughs> I'm standing around it not spinning out. I guess if you hit a massive rock, then it's going to spin out. Uh, I have not. I have not. I've avoided all videos about the Mandalay, to be honest, uh, until I got to fly it myself. Right, let's have a look at this. These guys. Because I didn't want. I knew this was going to be a special ship, so I didn't want it. I didn't want to spoil it for myself. Uh, let's disembark. <laughs> There's the electric tree. And it is green. I'm not going to bother with the mushroom thing. Yeah. And now he's going to burn it. But at least we took a sample. Is another quality of life thing I would like. Multiple sample containers. Cause, cause, so you can switch them out. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> Screw solar panels on the roof. I want an electric tree in my garden. <laughs> oh, dear. I uh, wouldn't call what Alec does to it flying. What do you call it, then? <laughs> it's like abusing it. See, see that wall there? Right, I'm going to go to that and climb out of it using this this tank. Because it will do it. You call it lave radioing. <laughs> oh wow, that's a lot further away than I thought it was. Oof. My spleen. Oh, come on. Come on now. No, go forwards. Forwards. There's me saying how good this scorpion tank is, and I can't even drive in a straight line. Right, that looks like that's the nearer cliff, doesn't it? It's why you normally do the driving. That is true. Sadly, right now, you're unable to because this is this is a test server. And so this, this is why exploration is a perfect thing for these test servers. Because uh, if people can't join you, then... Um, oh, look, you can see... You can see... Um, the... the uh, the dust cloud, the spiral dust cloud there. That's cool. Look at this atmosphere. Isn't this really nice? More electric trees over there. Is that electric trees or is that mushrooms? Oh, that might be much. No, electric tree. Ooh. Ooh. Nice pour back. It'd be nice to be able to engineer our SRVs, so you can you can focus on either better, just just a better pit management thing, so you get more um, engine power or more weapon power. But you can only do one at the expense of another. So then you would have your flying SRV. You wouldn't hardly run out of boost. Or you could go for something pure tank.
because the, the minigun on the top of this is pretty sweet. And it's got a missile launcher as well. And, and this is actually, uh, for those who don't know, who haven't seen this before, this is a multi-crew capable SRV. So you can either have like uh, somebody in the passenger seat firing the turret, or uh, as Connor often does, you, you can drive people around. <laughs> That looks like at least quite steep there, doesn't it? Oh, crikey! Straight line! As he's saying, this thing doesn't spin out, but it does when I'm drawing. Oh, you know what it is as well? I don't have drive assist off. Oh, we're in a hole. Get over there. get over this it's like that getting over it game isn't it with the the guy sitting in a cauldron with a hammer oh hull integrity at 50 percent how did that rock get through my shields there's more electric trees over there and more mushrooms Probably need to repair this. Oh, come on. This is painful. Sorry, everybody. Holy shit. How many mushrooms? Like, this is a field of bloody mushrooms. A massive field of mushrooms. I've never seen any. Any this many. Look at this. This is insane. Yeah, we're rich. That's insane. I've never seen so many mushrooms. Oh, let me fix the SRV. Uh... Is it in here? No, it's in here, isn't it? Repair. SRV repair. Must be a dark, wet crater. <laughs> Are there any onions next door? Well, for onion head. <laughs> right, that's 100% redone. We'll try and get through this field of mushrooms. All right, let's get through here. Okay. I just fixed this up. It's already at 99%. More electric trees. More mushrooms. Oh, crap, this planet. If you wanted to make a, a, you know, a mushroom pizza. Hey, Subsonic. How you doing, bud? Kind of mushroom tagliatelle if you want. Got mushrooms for days. There's more. So, if you go up to an electric tree, can you charge your suit from it? Thoughts on power play? I haven't not tried it yet. Um, I will do. Because it's got to be better than the current power play, which I find, you know, lacking. Uh, but I'm sure I will have some opinions on it uh, later. I'm going to try the electric tree thing and see if it will fix my suit. Where there you are. Let's see if I can charge my suit from an from electric tree. It is a very long way away. I am noticing this now. It's over there. It seems close. It isn't. It isn't close. Chance of this working 1%. I mean, really? Let's see. Not scan. Charge mode. Transfer. No. Sadly. 
what is this field? It does. I do love that it's got a, a field though. Yeah. All right. Well, we we learned a thing. Even if the thing that you learn is that the thing doesn't work, I'm, I'm going to call my ship. Recall my ship. Let's see how um, how well it can come down. Oh, I'll get in my car first. And then we'll go into external camera and watch the thing coming for the landing. Where are you? There you are. Hey, Mandalay. Where are you? I mean, that's pretty far away, Mandalay. Pretty good. Ah, oh, the tree's AC. My suit must be DC. Got it. <laughs> right. Sorry, tree. You're the wrong kind of power for me. The tree's three phase. It's tree phase, isn't it? Oh dear, oh dear. Worst Uber driver ever. Ooh. Oops. <laughs> Can I get in here just, just sideways? Can I board my ship, please? Yes. Okay, well, that was cool. We found some electric trees. I've never seen them before. So in terms of exploration this is a successful exploration because i've never seen them before i i i've i found a thing but let's let's see if we can get up and down this you're right this really is far yeah it would have taken a while the wrong kind of electric electricity oh god see it's not just me it's not just me <laughs> oh dear oh dear well it wouldn't be a stream without dad jokes would it Okay, yeah, this is really far away. <laughs> so, never apologize for a good, for a good dad joke. If we didn't have them, the world would be poorer for it. Oh my god. Yeah, the car would not have probably would have run out of fuel before it got here. The stream would have ended. Oh my goodness. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna land at the top. I'm going to drive the scorpion tank down the wall. This is where Alex, fl Alex flies past me in an SRV. Yeah. Just like straight past me. <laughs> Was there a good dad joke? No. no. All dad jokes are good. Yeah, see? Right, we're almost at the top of this thing now. No idea. No idea where it's going to be. Right, so here we go. We've got our crater. Bloody hell, it's like the Hoover Dam, isn't it? We're gonna land. See, see if we can land here on the end. 
Let's see how easy it is to get this thing to find a blue spot. There's one. I'll let it land itself. It's got auto landing turned on. I'll let it do it. Come on, spaceship. You can land. I love this. The engines go into their downward position. Yeah, it's really cool ship. Very nice. Very nice looking ship. It does have a little bit of... See those fangs there? I love that. That is so cool because that actually makes it look like the Spitting Cobra. I know it's just geometry, but it's very cleverly done to make it look like snake fangs. See what I mean? Very clever. Uh, get a look at the thrusters in the module panel. Yeah, sure. They're currently turned off. Why are they turned off? Uh, show info. So, yeah, so they are currently... Uh, they're five A's. Uh, is that what you want to see? Is that because they landed? Ah, right, gotcha. You know what? I've never noticed that. Never noticed that. Let's take the Scorpion out. Yeah, no engineering on this just yet. The only thing I've engineered is the frame shift drive, and that's just to to give me uh, more range. Because um, as we were, you know, about to fly out to uh, Barnard, so which we still haven't done. I need to get a wiggle on with that, don't I? Get us out to it. Where is the cliff edge? Where's the cliff edge? Am I going the wrong way? Yeah, I'm a numpty. It's over there. Over there. Right. Turn left. Whoa. But all the rocks. Oh, more electric trees. Whoa! More electric trees. Oh. Uh, wasn't digging at it. I uh, just wanted to. Uh, for, oh yes, yeah, that's fine. But where is this cliff edge now? What? I'm, I'm uh, losing my mind. I didn't. Wasn't that far away from the edge, was I? There, I'm so stupid. I am so stupid. I'm facing the wrong way. Am I facing the wrong way? Right. Go. Right. Backwards. Those massive clip edges are always easy to use. Yeah, thanks for that. Right, let's go this way. Onwards. Come on. Come on, little, little ladybird. Oh, we'll put this on to uh, smooth mode. Is it pantomime season? <laughs> it's behind you. Oh, no, it isn't. Right, before we go off here, I'm going to quickly get myself a drink. Uh, I won't put the thing on. It's not a bio break per se. Uh, Esther, thank you for the follow there. Oh, 07 to you. Be back in a second. Won't be long. There we go. I told you it wouldn't be long. All right, so 
We are facing the cliff edge. That's a good sign. Uh, there's another electric tree. They're bloody everywhere. This place is lousy with them. All right, Cliff Edge, you're not scary. I ain't afraid of no Cliff Edge. I'm in a scorpion tank. Now, is this going to be a gradual drop off or is it going to be like instant death drop off? Uh, it's quite far down, isn't it, Eddie? Whoa. What are all these bloody rocks doing on the side? Why haven't they all fallen into the hole? Here we go! Oh, crap. Alright, we're at quite the angle now. Um, hello, Big Rock. <laughs> Don't need to hit you with my face. Okay, okay, this is quite quite far down now. But the scorpion can handle it. It can handle it. What's that? Uh, looks like the Mandalay is around 10% slower than the Mamba. Okay. Candy, candy trip is great. The deeper, the better. We're going down a hill. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, shit. Come on. Fast is going. Mostly gravity assisted here. That engine at the back, like jet engine, blows out. Okay, towards the ground, onwards. What did I hit? I hit something there. Oh, this is something that Elite does have. It's an amazing view on a random planet that I've got first footfall on. But no one's been here before, ever, in the game. I mean, it might have been discovered by someone, but no one's set foot on it. Ah! Oh, right in the kisser. Ah! Hey, Rock. We aren't even halfway down. That was just the... That was the pre-cliff. That wasn't even the full cliff. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, dear. This is fine. I'm in a scorpion tank. What could possibly go wrong in a scorpion tank? You know what, I'm going to turn drive assist off, because I think that's causing me the most grief. Uh, where are you, drive assist off? Drive assist? Where are you? Off. Drive assist off. Because that tries to keep you going in a straight line, and sometimes it, it doesn't really help, as I'm demonstrating not at all, not at all demonstrating drive assist off being better. It certainly helps in a scarab. Uh-oh. This is the most air that a scorpion ever gets. You should never go full cliff. Just ask the shadows. Cliff. Um... Oh, wow. They're growing out at a funny angle, aren't they? Who was the guitarist in the shadows?
Oh, come on. Hank Marvin. Yeah, why was I thinking Cliff? He did a, a thing with Jean-Michel Jarre. Um, when was that? That was a Docklands concert. Or was it? Oh, no, it might have been Houston. The shadows never go anywhere, always walking around in circles. Ah! Docklands, okay. Oh, yeah, because for the Houston concert, there was a saxophone player that he had uh, with him. Because they did a tribute to the Challenger disaster, didn't they? Uh-oh. My chassis has been compromised. Ooh. Right, are we nearly there yet? Ooh, glad we didn't hurt that rock. Oh, I'm glad we didn't hurt that rock as well. Ah. <laughs> it's going to take an hour to drive up this cliff, isn't it? Oh. All these bloody rocks. Oh, the sax player died in the Challenger. It was a tribute to him, wasn't it? That was it. Oh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time, Happy. Oh, that was it, was it? Because, yeah, they were going to do um, a set uh, from space. But obviously, uh... right, let's fix the SRV. Take a quick drink. So I think rather than get all the way to the bottom, are we even nearly at the bottom? No, not quite. But there's a significant amount of cliffage ahead. I'll try and drive up there, but like... <laughs> the test is, I suppose, we dismiss the ship and see, see if it will... Uh... It won't, will it? This is going to be a hell of a climb, but it does it like a champ. This angle that we're at is insane, but the Scorpion tank will go up this like an absolute champ. As long as there isn't an idiot driving, which there currently is. Do you have to hit every bloody one? Oh, they got Halloween paint drops. I've not taken a look at them, to be honest, but drops are enabled. So if you have, if you want to get the drops, all you need to do is stick around and the drops will, will happen. And then you need to, if you haven't already, link your Twitch account to your Frontier account. And then they will be applied to your account. Whichever account you have linked, that's the one that will be applied. And there are instructions uh, to do that if you want. Oh, yeah, so Connor's put the thing in for the chat if you want to figure out how to do that. If you haven't already done it, then you can go get those nice, lovely paint jobs simply for sitting, listening to me or any of the other uh, partner uh, streamers, actually. Um, th there's unique partner drops for all, all of us. So um, if you miss um, the ones for me, you can also get them from someone else. We're all a big community. Oh, this seems so far away. Uh, it's like, oh, I'm just driving along a straight line. I'm not. I'm not driving along a straight line. That is the straight line. That's the angle I'm currently going up. <laughs> it's, a, it's quite the uh, incline. Hope the handbrake works. Hopefully I can get to the top without it, like, taking forever. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll self-destruct and I'll appear in the ship. 
hopefully. Ooh. Although, if I do that, will I lose my exploration data that I've just got? Oh, will, won't I? No, I won't. What about for the star systems that I've scanned? This is only if the ship dies. Ah. If you blow up, you will lose Exobio. But I've already... What? Exobio that I haven't turned in. So I'll lose my, my electric tree registry. That's no good. These... Mushrooms, they love this planet, don't they? They're growing all over the place. I keep it on a USB stick in my pocket instead of the ship. Right. far away. Are we nearly there yet? Just over this ridge. Get over the ridge. Just over the next ridge. Mushrooms! Lots of bloody mushrooms. How many mushrooms on this bloody rock? Getting in my way. Get out of my way, mushroom. So many mushrooms. Oh my god. Oh my god. I know I'm a fun guy, but this is ridiculous. You didn't think you were getting away with without stupid dad jokes, did you? <laughs> oh, get my coat. Right, I am through. I'm through! To the top! No mushroom left. In that crater for uh, for any more no much room oh god all oh, right i see we need a cap on these jokes do we <laughs> on the mushroom oh dear oh dear you have to work particularly hard to uh to, to make mushroom jokes, I think. Oh, I can't think of any. I can't think of any mushroom jokes. I guess it's a death cap of comedy. Only fun guys can tell mushroom jokes. I did the fun guy joke. That's the only joke, isn't it? I thought that it would be a 10 minute thing. You know, just a little, little aside showing how good the scorpion is at climbing steep inclines. It would only take 10 minutes, I thought. You know, I'll just climb up. I mean, I should have known. I mean, I... It is pretty stupid of me to climb up the biggest wall of the crater that can be seen from space. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is what's worrying me, Connor. That is what is worrying me. Because is this flat? None of this is flat. Whoa! No, 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 no. Ooh. Wheels on the ground. More bloody mushrooms. What's the gravity on this world? Oh, it's only 0 0.07 G. No wonder this is easy. Recalling the ship in this terrain usually isn't a problem. It will just hover. Oh, Shane, you lovely, lovely person. <laughs> this is such a, like, psych! <laughs> oh, 
I've recalled it anyway. Where is he? Where is he? Where are you, ship? Come on, spaceship. Land near me. Watch it blow up. Don't say that. Don't say that. Where's the spaceship? Where are you, spaceship? There he is. Oh, there he is. He's coming down. He's coming down. Come on, you beautiful spaceship. Let's see if you can pick me up. Put lights down where the thingy is. Move to the ship. Moving to the ship. Um. Move to the ship. Uh, brakes. Right, come on. Come on now. Come on. Get up the hell! Why won't you get... It's not doing the thing it's supposed to do. It's not doing it! Right, let's do this with the camera. Uh, I'm going to stick drive assist on. Drive assist on. Drive assist on. Right. Let's do the external camera thing so we can see from the ship where the bay is. Alright, so that's level ish okay so if i go forward a bit pin that to the world right it's so about there it should be shouldn't it it's even scan putting a light there for me forward a bit forward a bit it's not doing it it's not doing it uh it should when it lines up, it should uh, give me a board ship option. But it's not doing it, is it? Why aren't you doing it? Because I've done this in the past, but it's it's not, not... This is a bit of a weird situation. So I think I'm not far enough over. Right, okay. So that's you there. Hmm. Pin that to the world. Let's reverse. Kind of looking about here, aren't we? About, about there. Is that it? No? This is... This sucks. I have to dismiss it again. Right, we have to go back up the hill. I'll call it again in a bit. When I get onto... A bit more high ground. Try using the mouse look to look up. I could have done that, couldn't I? Derp. I could have done that. It's a bit far, 
Darn it, eh? This was a dumb, dumb thing I did. But at least if we get to see... All right, maybe there. Maybe there. There's a big cratery thing here. A crater on the crater. And the crater wall. Maybe this will be a good place. I'll try this. Recall the ship. Check recalled. Come on, spaceship. Yeah, I could use the mouse, Luke. There he is. All right, we got this. We got this, right? About there, isn't it? Nope. to see where it is and it's not working no come on okay come on forwards forwards so i'm trying to use the line to to also to line it up Not there. No, nope, wrong button. Wrong button. Oh, come on. Not fair. Not fair. Not fair. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm stranded like Matt Damon. I know. Feels bad. We're gonna have to do it again, dismiss it again. This is it's getting silly now. Stupid spaceship. Hey, DNA. How you doing? Ah, you've caught me at a bad time. I'm trying to. Trying to get out of this. I thought it'd be a good idea to go onto a planet no one's ever been before, where there's a big crater, and take the uh, the SRV and um, try and climb down and back up again. Because I thought this will not take me long. Because I'm in a Scorpion, and a Scorpion has got the best climb rate of any vehicle in the game. Sadly, sadly, very sadly, um, I can't seem to use the Skyhook. Um, feature of the the ship in order to get me on the slope so i'm trying to so i will have to get to the top so you will have to bear with me uh and then then what we're going to do is hightail it to the middle of barnard's loop which is where we were supposed to go about an hour ago <laughs> so this is supposed to be demonstrating how good the mandalay is and the mandalay is very good very nice but i seem to be making a bit of a, a dog's breakfast of of this and we spend more time in this in the scorpion tent than we have with anything else well we're currently going up a 55 degree slope all we have now is the rest of mount kilimanjaro 
uh, to climb as well. But this is fine. This is fine. This is a nice smooth bit. We should be okay with this, right? But I, th I think the I think the scorpion can climb up like about eighty degrees. It's insane. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Get complacent, you see. It, it, it does such a good job, then you get really complacent. What's that? Ask the Magic 8 Ball. Will Scorb ever, ever make it to the top? Of course I will. Something really bad would have to happen for me to not. Alright, I'll ask the Magic 8 Ball. Oh, Magic 8 Ball. How many, how many, how many, how many? Will Scorb ever make it to the top? Oh dear. My sources say no. What's going to happen? Uh, just FYI, uh, if you do make it out of this crater, there's a blue Lagrange cloud in... Oh, y yes. Yes, we will. We will check that out. Thank you. Is that That's nearby, right? We'll fly to that. Maybe that's where we shall end the stream. And maybe next weekend, uh, because the um, the Mandalay and the Powerplay 2 patch is being slightly delayed. Slightly. So, week commencing the 28th is when they say it will be out after that. So, we can imagine it will be within that week. Uh, but that does mean that next weekend it won't be available for, um, for the broadcast, so we will have to probably uh do some more exploration in in um barnard's loop which i i don't see that as a problem right let's try and get our bloody shit back now right come on we're at a five degree angle here this is not too bad we could do this right uh three notable stealth phenomena there's a 33 uh, percent chance you go straight to the blue one nice uh Un until I can get Star Citizen running at a decent speed on this machine, there won't be a Star Citizen stream. Because the more they add to it, the the more performance hungry it becomes. And Faldi too, thank you for the follow. So um, it does make it more difficult for me to uh, to put on an entertaining show if I'm getting made miserable by. <laughs> Is it landing? Are you landing? He's landing! Good. Nice, nice, nice. Right. Yes! Thank you. Now I can get in. Now I can get in. Come on! Yeah! We can board the ship! It's got better. Maybe uh, more testing is needed. Okay. I mean, I'll give it a try. But, but um, right now... I'm, I'm waiting for things to drastically improve. And considering all of the uh, effort Frontier are putting into uh, into Elite Dangerous at the moment, it makes more sense to me to to be playing this on, on stream anyway. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Right, so I'm going to fly out to there. Feel like that took forever. <laughs> took forever. Right, so we'll switch up where we're going. So we've got six jumps to. Let's make it to Titov first. Because why not? It looks like one of them birds doing a mating dance with those wings. It's just really pretty. I really do hope that um, they, they're keeping these ship designers and they're just going to keep making more. I really hope that. Um, because, like I said earlier on, you know, Star Citizen retains people because there's constantly a flow of ships coming out. Constantly. And that's their funding model as well. Like it or not, that's, that's how they make their money. Uh, and that's how they fund continuous development. They don't have all that money sitting in the bank. They've spent it. It's all it's all spent. Uh, so they need to keep making money. 
because they're paying developers and artists and server guys and loads and loads of uh, people working on that game. And it's much in the same way as with Elite Dangerous. And I've said this for years, right? If we want the game to continually be developed, then Frontier need a way to make money from it. Now, the way that they're doing it at the moment is selling early access to these ships. It's an optional thing. You don't need to do it. You don't need to buy it. If no one's forcing you. No one's forcing anyone. Uh, so, but, you know, if you do have a bit of money, it's like 20 quid. It's a bit of DLC. I think it's like 15 or 20 quid. I can't remember um, exactly how much it is for the arcs that you need. But you can always wait. And in like three months time, the ship's available for everyone to be bought um, with in-game money. But it does provide a revenue stream to help pay for this. So to help pay for continued development in the game. So if you like the game continuously being developed, Frontier need an income. Uh, so so I'm, I'm fully behind it. Yeah, you just buy to sponsor. Exactly, exactly. So it, we can't have it both ways, you see. Uh, we can't have it um, where we say, um, I bought the game, so therefore it should run forever. I mean, that's unreasonable. If it was a single player game, yeah, okay, you, you can do that. It, but it, there is an online aspect to it, and we're, we're getting constantly uh, new features now. Although there was a content drought and it lasted for a long time, and it annoyed a lot of people. But it um, looks like things are turning a corner. And and it's something that's been going on all year. This is not just something that's, um, you know, that they decided suddenly to improve. Look at that. That they decided to improve uh, the way that they do things. This has been going on all year. So this is a dedication. This is, we know that they mean it. Look at that. Barnard's loop is enormous. Hey, Father Bill. I'm glad to reward what I see as honest effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what it is. It does feel like honest effort. And it does feel like that. Four, three, two, one, yeah. I mean, some people can't afford it. We're, we're, we're all living in difficult times. Uh, and to that the frontier know that they know that that they, 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 they'll just say don't worry whoa that's a big one they'll say don't worry wait wait until it comes out probably january because it's normally like three months after the patch comes out they got the next one if i want them to keep doing this so the next ship next ship next ship just keep going keep going because this constantly it was instant. I got that. I've got all of them now, and it's it's like twenty quid. If it's twenty quid, it's twenty quid every three months. That's that's a subscription fee in, in my mind. Yeah, it, it is the best year yet. Right, I'm stuck in this gravity well. I don't want to be stuck in this gravity well. Let's get out of this gravity well. Bye bye, star. <laughs> there we go. That's what this is for. This is an amazing bit of kit. Amazing. It's what it's for. It's like, I don't want to be stuck in this gravity well. Just press the button. Get out of my way, star. Stupid star. Oh, quick. Let's do a scan. With your big old gravity. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it? It's so good. Well, um, that's... Um, I made an entire video uh, about the SCO drive, but it's it's a it's a fantasy kind of thing, obviously. But um, the, the SCO drive had just been announced, and that inspired me to put my last video together. So, so that, that's why. So I thought it was so cool. I actually years ago at a LaveCon, um, I was talking about uh, to Sandro Samarco about this very subject about having um, a drive where you could just disengage safeties and like um, go really, really fast. And I, I actually wanted it as well so that you could slingshot around stars and planets and like maybe you get caught in the gravity well. But like, uh, let's say he didn't think it was a good idea at the time, but like, but now we know it is, don't we? 
How many things are there here? No, we're just going. We're going, 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 going. That's what we're doing. Uh, four ships. I think it's either a fighter, passenger, or multi roll. We've got plenty of multi rolls. I like that they're doing these so far based on the tiers. So we've got combat, we've got industrial, transport, trade, right? Um, now we've got exploration. The next one, I don't know what it would be, maybe passenger. I was actually a little bit sad when they uh, made the um, the passenger compartments because the Beluga and the Dolphin used to have it so that you could only put passenger compartments in certain slots. I mean, all right, it made it it made for a um, a big multi-roll ship, but we've got so many multi-roll ships. It was nice that they were just for passengers, but never mind. I like the idea of ships that are dedicated to something really good at that one area and terrible at everything else. Like that, that should be the design uh, ethic. Look at this. Look at this. Gorgeous. Ship's not bad either. Absolutely gorgeous part of space, this is. Oh, and yeah, right. The Dolphin is my favourite ship next to the Mark IV. It never heats up. Did some guy blow up a basilisk with a Type 8? Probably. Wouldn't surprise me. People go fighting uh, Dargoids and Sidewinders and things. It's, uh... It's fun. Right, we're going to go and find... So now we're here. Let's find that star system that uh, Infwale mentioned. Uh, da, 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 let me find it. 20 quid for the stellar, well, 10, 10 for the normal. Where are we? Do, 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 do. Have you got the name of that place again? Save me going through all of the chats. Go chuck it into. Thank you. Thank you. V409. Onions. 409 onions, please. Or is it a Orinus version? 409. Unavailable. Missing a permit? What? What permit do I need? Is it because to get to get at this place, I need to... Uh, some of these areas are permit locked, aren't they? Where are you compared to where I am? Right, so this is the problem. I've got to get through Barnard's Loop, which is largely permit locked. Whoa. Okay, so if I try and get to, say here one of these guys here then i might be able to make my way through oh i really do have to take that off my throttle what about that can i get there can i plot a route negative how about you can i plot a route It's not plotting a route, is it? Target system manually instead of route. What, fly to it manually? Uh, well, I will have to fly right through the center. Oh, you can give me waypoints. Thank you. Okay. Waypoint one, please. I'm, I'm at um, currently <laughs> Titov. Titov. Making a tit of myself. Uh, two or three years ago, there was uh, a mission to find beacons leading to that system. Ah, uh, what's the now? You bookmark them. You absolute legend. Uh, jump range is like 55, 56 light years. Yeah, so there's lots of permit lock systems around here. Bloody Pilots Federation with your permit locks. Okay, so Col 
Pole 285 Sector NV uh, Dash N B 74 Gotcha. So I should be able to jump to that one. And what? How far away are you? Okay. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, that's going back on myself. That's going back on myself. I don't want that one. Yeah, that, that's not the way. Not the way. That's from the bubble. So near where I am then. So... Sinu F uh, RJ. Let's see if I can get there. RJ dash U B21 dash zero. Where are you? Right, so uh, I'm already past there. Shenvi. Okay. Where are you? Uh, I'm already past there as well. I'm in tit, tit off there. <laughs> Just give the last second to, to jump. The second to last jump, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm actually quite far. So, so this this is the route from the, um, the bubble. All right, let's try that. Uh, NGC one nine 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 sector uh, FH. Oh, uh, <laughs> which one? Let's see. Let's try that one. V two one eight one Uranus. Where are you? Are you further than I am right now? No, so more. <laughs> Maybe I'm in a cul de sac. Maybe I'll have to back out and, and to go around. Because the. Uh... It really ought to show I'm on the other side. If I go to that, I'll go to V. I'll go there then. V two one eight one Uranus, right? I'll go there. See how many jumps it is. Unavailable. Missing permit. Why? Okay. Tra tra trapezium. GX dash A B fourteen zero Why won't that plot? That's on the way back. How am I uh, uh, plot the route? Is this a bug or something? Just okay. Okay, okay. That's a good point. I'll try that. See if it'll get me there directly. So V V409. Oh, is it gone? All right, I'll just select it. How far away? Oh, it's only 20. Of course. Yeah. Select that. So then come out of here. Uh, so it's behind me. Is it behind me? No, that's not it. Must be in the list then. Must be in the list. V it mu Just above the root button, is it? Four two six. Was that it? Four two six? No? No 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 no. 
409. 45. Hmm. All right, I'll do it again. That looks only good at 20. Oh, okay. V. 409. Arenas. So it's above the... So if I select that... So where is it then? Where's the target button? Below the root button. Where are you? Uh, right side icons, targets. Icons, icons. Set target. Gotcha. Thank you. You know, I still, after all this time, have not uh, managed to figure out how all this works on the on the, the new user interface. And I say new, it's years old now. Yeah, so why, why bother trying to plot a route? <laughs> But it can just jump there directly. So why won't it just plot it? Just like it's, yeah, there you go. You get there easy. Invalid permit. Talking about seven and a half. No, I wasn't on eco. I'm never on eco. I did the click and hold. Did all that. They asked about. <laughs> Yeah, I did that. Let's do our scanny scan. 12 bodies. Notable stellar phenomenon. Let's go there. Ooh, this is going to be pretty. This is going to be pretty. Root plotting is weird sometimes. Yeah, I think it's because of all the nonsense that's in this area. All of the uh, permit locks. Um, so it must be trying to plot a route around and must have a maximum of whoa, hello, the little like there's a lot of stars here, and if a lot of my permit locks, then maybe it will, um, maybe it will just time out. Like, I'm gonna try 20 stars around you, and if I can't get one of them, root plotting failed. Will the blue one... What? I'm in the gravity well. Hello, Jan. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Yellow or blue, place your bets. What? 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 Exactly. Um, right, so we've got to ask Magic 8-Ball. Will it be oh, blue? Oh, this is wise. Yes. Uh, it is... Uh, will it be the blue one? Ask again later. It wants me to find out for myself. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. That's why it's the evil Magic 8 Ball. Well, yes. Let's see. Is it blue? Will it be the blue one? It's the yellow one. What's going on here? So the other one will be um, the blue one. Oh, look at that. Lightning! I just saw lightning. So, how is the Mandalay holding up to expectations? It's amazing. Absolutely. This is what I was hoping. Hell yes. yes. I'm going to have to turn your volume down a little bit, Jan. You are... oh, I'm, 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 I'm I kick ass. You're a bit loud. There, mm. I'll just turn it down a little bit. Okay, right. So, we've got spiky boys here. Mm -hmm. That was. Oh, no, that wasn't lightning. That's a reflection from the canopy. Um, but right. what was it reflecting? Light. Lightning, yeah. I don't know. Oh, look at this. this so it's still really lightning. Nice now. This looks really nice now. Oh. oh, that is a handsome ship. It is. Yeah. Oh. Check this out, Jan. Right, so, so let me move around here so I can get a bit of distance, right? Let's put the... Uh, I'll, I'll set the... the, the camera to target the ship so that when I move there we go and I'll put the camera into free fly mode so it will be nice and stable watch the engines as I roll oh fuck 
full engines for the win. That is yeah. awesome. There's just one problem. Uh, when you mm. pitch down, they the, the, when you pitch up and down, they go the wrong way. Well, hence Mandalayed. <laughs> well, it might be one of the bugs. Maybe maybe that's it. The thing. Might be that they've got this. They've got this. They'll fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, Connor wants to know: Have you been partying, Jen? <laughs> partying is a relative term. No, it isn't. It's a yes or no. <laughs> relative, my ass. <laughs> right, check this out as well. The boost sound, right? All right. Oh, hang on. I sound up. Mm -hmm. That will be fixed on release. The crate does that as well. Is it? Is the crate one the wrong way around? Spiky boys. You ready? Let's fly towards some, something there. That he's going to pull. Right. Boosty boost boost. Got a very nice boost. Oh. So so far, this is my favourite ship for doing any form of exploration. It's cool because it kind of means business, but it's not shoving it in your face. And it's so manoeuvrable. It, it, oh, that is oh, that is awesome. Oh. Look at the drift round that crystal. Damn, boy! It's really maneuverable. Oh, this is going to be my go-to. What am I going to do? Because all of my video shit is like on the crate bridge. Yeah, well... And I can't do that here. Nope. But, but this ship kicks ass. It uh. really does. It really does. Just kick your ass again. Hmm? I can't you turn can't right. You can't turn right! It needs to be said with a, like, oh. echoey thing. Just left turns again. Lucky you're not beating the shit out of anything at this point, but whatever. That is true. All right, so... Abdi, you misplayed this. It could have been so much more dangerous. Uh, you weren't you know. here earlier, John. You weren't here earlier. When the, oh. Like... Was there a thing? I can only turn right. What's the other one? You can only turn right, like you can only count to three. Yeah, so let's go to the other notable stellar phenomena. I can't turn right. Alright, left it is then. <laughs> God damn it, Apti. And left only, is good. The only, I prefer just, left. The left only justification friendly. that I get, so I can't go right there, is shovel. The one word, shovel. That's the only explanation. Just shovel. See? See what I mean? Do you know what? One of these days... You do days, one small murder with a shovel uh, and they're never going to get it. Chat is going to have to know. They already know. What? Yeah, yeah, but they have... They know, but they haven't seen it. Well, it wasn't recorded, so they're not going to see it, are they? Exactly. And you took exhaustive steps to make sure that it wasn't recorded because shovel um, i did not take exhaustive steps to not do something that's not how taking steps to, for something works chat prove me wrong did score oh, or not take exhaustive steps to prove that the shovel incident never took place what, you, were you know how mind. this is gonna turn out out of your bloody mind mm. <laughs> You know how this is going to go. Oh, God. I'm not like Machiavellian. How do we know exactly, Epaphos? Exactly. How do we know? <laughs> yeah, Jen is a little bit Connor, late to say. We already had this conversation. Connor, I'm always a little bit late to the show. Right. Oh, this is red. What's this? That is because I turn up when I am required. Oh, God. Right, so this isn't a blue one either. Where's the blue one? It's another Spiky Boys one. Oh, 
Oh, have you seen the lights, Jan? Look at this, right? You put the lights on and look at the shadows there. You get fangs. Oh. It's a snake after all. And it's got eyes and Somebody fangs. thought that out, didn't they? Yes, they really did. Well played, Frontier. Well played. That is awesome. Good job. It's, it's on the right, is it? I can't go right. I've got to go left. <laughs> and that's why she said it. Ooh, what's She's this? She's facing you. Apti. I know you too well, though. Oh, look at that. I love this kind of fog. Look at this. Look at that. You get some proper speed going on. Ooh. That is a good profile of a ship, I have to say. Mm -hmm. It's got the ship kit on it. It's uh, like calendar worthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm really happy with the way that they've done this. So, is there another NSP in here then? Canon data is incorrect. I think we'll have to tell LCU this. If Infile says that, I believe him. Well,. Our eyes can tell us that as well, because it's supposed to be blue, and it's not. There ain't no blue here. It's, so that's the other one. Uh, so where's the other blue one, then? No blue here. The point is, whatever Infoil says is correct, because he's already been there. He's mm -hmm. already been there. Mm -hmm. When can I turn right again? Uh, five minutes. I wasn't counting, so bad luck for you. Papa, stop it. Never. You see, you don't get you don't get never as an option. <laughs> what have we got here? Pleasure a raven. Oh, uh, how's the um, how's the what's it? The Thargoid um doing? Is it dead yet? Raging, isn't it? Whatever. It's going slow. Yeah, the, the the Titan. Yeah. Yeah. I watched uh, some stuff earlier. They were kicking its ass, as always. Mm-hmm. I got a stretch. All right, stretchy time. Um, it doesn't say which part you have to stretch, though. I'm stretching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got it. Can't seem to do the other one properly though. Ugh. Dude, I could never do that over the shoulder shit that you do. Ever. Even in my younger <laughs> days, I just couldn't. There we go. Uh so let's see how it's doing. The Titans, let's bring this up. It's half dead, is it? Oh, there's two. There's two left then. Is this up to date? So it's half dead. That one's half dead. This. So there's another one after this, then. Destroyed. 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 Dead. Dead. All right. <laughs> I wonder what they're gonna do after. Coke. Joe. Coke Joe. Uh, no, uh, I'm. I'm gonna have to look that up. That is bollocks. I'm gonna have to look that one up. What the balls is that? Okay. Um. Well, what's Hawking's reach? Where are the Guardian ruins here? There's some Guardian ruins and, and downed Thargoid uh, vessels nearby. Does anyone remember where they are? As we're out here. So this ship with this jump range makes a mockery of the uh, permit lock system. So it's just, ah, just go there. Right, you like so. flicking, flicking the bees all the time, coppers. Mm-hmm. 
Apparently, Coca Joe is the pre Columbian Zapotec divinity of the rain. What? So it's kind of in the same field as Storm as all of the others, but I mean, that is very much like left over on the pavement ship going on. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's uh, an Aztec storm deity. Okay. How's that? Anyway, I'm... no, no, no. Not engaging. Um, not, not important. All you need to know is pew pew, blow up, hey, victory. Zapotec. Griffin Gecko says Zapotec, not Aztec. What did, did, did I say that? You said Aztec. What? You're right, Grippy, but really, at the end of the day, Pew Pew, dead. Right, Chad. I, I don't know who came up with these names. Someone in, like, Hudson's office, probably. It doesn't matter. Not our problem. We just go Pew Pew, thing goes die. Let's see if there's another notable style phenomenon here. Maybe there is. Because uh, I've only seen two of them. I would like to see the um, the crash and the guardian um, ruin that's here. If someone knows what oh. that is, there is, is one around here. There? Th oh, there is I'd around here somewhere. That too. I've never seen one of those. What a guardian ruin? No, a crashed guardian ruin. No, it's not a crashed guardian ruin. It's a crashed thargoid near to it on the same planet. Grippy Still Gecko. not seen one. Still not seen one. Okay, okay, Jen. Uh, you take a uh, Grippy Gecko. Ah, oh, right. So I'm going to do a search for um, Guardian. Thought Cloud Storm Storm Deity. Space. Uh, in... Grippy, you are a man of a rare insight. You really are. That is bang on. Have a good night, sir. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. Come on, there is a guardian thing nearby. Trying to find it. Uh, is there a um? Oh, there is, isn't there? Is it the cannon site that lets you search for um guardian bases and things? Um. Let's see, Canon Interstellar. Guardian Research, the dangerous. Canon Research Group. <laughs> Let's see if this, if these guys have got a, a way that we can search. Let's see if, this, if these guys have got a, a way that we can search. Let's see if these guys have got a way that we can search. What the hell? Awesome, happy, thank you. Right, so if we go into Canon Science, uh, Xenotechnology, no. Where are you? Where are you? Does anyone else know how to find this stuff? Find kind of is Xeno, but whatever. Oh, I've not seen that. One more. This, this is, is like... actually quite funky. All of that shit that you can see by just like tapping a thing and it tells you. That's pretty cool. Uh, crashed Thargoid. So, crashed Thargoid ship. There's... Where are they? Because there's definitely one near to... Um, there's one near to Barnard's Loop. But I don't know where it is. The codex it's... knows. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. So I just checked the codex. I'd have thought that there would be... Oh, maybe Anara. Anara. Not CZ. Maybe this knows. Searching for um, 
No, I don't think it will. Can't see data. No. Stop it, Jan. <laughs> you wanted want some elevator music, didn't you? I did not want elevator music. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You uh, needed it. I'm going to have to disagree with you on this. Fair enough. Your call. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, so, does anybody know of a site or something w which will help us to find these things? I could have sworn that there was something with like a map of all the all the, um, the Thargoid sites and the uh, all the bases, all the Guardian stuff. There was something. I'd seen it. There was there was a something that showed it all, but I. Be buggered if I can find it. That sounds like a wish fulfillment fever dream to me. Cannons does have the map, but the Guardian Ruins isn't loading. Uh, where's where's that map? Where you seen that? Let's see if it'll load for me. Unless it's uh do, do you have a link to it, Infwell? While Infwell is sorting that, what is that echo? Gravity to pub chat. Hmm? What what was that that I missed? Oh, you you missed so much. Oh, forgive me for having a social life. <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> Just, no, 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 no. What is gravity to... Uh, where, where are what we? Was it? Where are we? Gravity to pub chat. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, there was a thing... So we were talking about gravity earlier on. Uh-huh. And pubs have gravity. E uh, okay. Yes. Is this going to do anything... Um, any idea? Yeah, cheers, <laughs> Effion. I know. I I wasn't expecting that, but it happened to me. It can happen to anybody. Social life. Who figured? Whatever. Yes. I'm not seeing these. These are the um, the type of... Are these Guardian base? These are Guardian Ancient Ruins, yes. But, like, I don't... I don't actually know where... Where in the um Where in the balls, exactly. Yeah. In Barnard's loop. Which we are here. But um I know I've not actually seen Barnard's Loop that close because I've never bothered getting that far because it was always permit locked. But that is actually pretty cool, I've gotta say. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, it's one of my favourite places. Let me see if I can. Is there a thing in here now I can say, show me stars that I've got Guardian thing with Bobs? Power play, Thargoid War, not interested in that. Root settings, display options. Try the codex. I did. I already tried the codex. It doesn't give you anything local to you, it just gives you a bunch of like locations, and they're not. Where is the thing? The codex is more like guidelines than actual rules. Yes, Jan. Uh, da, 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 da. So not realistic mode. Pilots Federation, has this got Guardian stuff? There's no population. Oh, Guardian. Here, here we go. Civilization. Guardians. Apply to root. Well, I've got root set, but so all the stars have gone now because there are no guardians around here. But there were. I swear there were. Echo, you take care, matey. Oh, what's that? Is that something? No, it's not. It's a. That's my point. 
This is really disappointing. I wanted to end at that thing. I suppose it doesn't matter, does it? There was definitely, definitely um, a Guardian site uh, in the middle of um, one of these things. Because I remember it It was really interesting uh, because it's like, well, they, they got through here and the Guardians are out here. So the, this must be bigger than we thought. Oh, let me turn off the uh, root lines. Oh, do we have a thing? Two mass. Uh, J one zero four. Who named this four four uh, one six? With no? the mass sector. Oh my god. I I kind of know it, but whatever. What the hell? Oh, how far are you? That's eight thousand light. Missing permit again. Where are we? That's 8,000 light years away. In a different nebula. Yeah, that, that's kind that of where Mo Mojo Moon was, but whatever. What? In the two mass area? Okay, let's see. Trapezium. Uh, sector. Uh, y, U, Y, I, O, R, X, C, 1. Dash two. That's a little bit closer, isn't it? It's in the way I order sector. I like that. 134 <laughs> lights. Can we get there? Uh, why can't we get there? It's doing its thing. Uh, let me. I'll target it first. So it's it's the targeted system. Right, we'll target it. Set target. Plot route, damn it. Missing permit. All right, we'll try and head towards it. Uh, obviously, I don't have a jump drive that can go quite that far. 134 light years. Not even with Jumponium. But I should be able to plot something on the way. Reduce that Indeed. down. Indeed. Uh, so, galaxy map. Okay, so to get there, oh, I'll turn the stars back on because I've got this whole thing for user data. Um, oh, oh, no, not user data. Oh, uh, no. Uh, population. No. Where is it? Mess made a mess of it again. Not visited. Uh, Pilots Federation. There we go. Guardians isn't even selected. What is go so are we on uh, root settings fastest let's try again back oh I need to plot the route let's try plotting the route now missing permit again filter saving has been bugged for ages now uh, it's a system with the Proteus site, which has the Guardian sites and crashed. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that's that's what I'm after. And it's nearby. Fairly nearby. I just need to turn on the stars again. I've forgotten how to do it. There we go. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, so if I get closer to... I want a star. That's... What is going on with this? Stupid thing. So we are there. Need to get somewhere in between. Uh, is that just a huge gap? How far are you? 116. Yeah, filters saving. It's like. They basically don't want you to find Raxler. That's not what it is. It is. And you're like on the path to find Raxler. So your um, coordinates might get messed up. We'll just see how it goes. Okay. Okay. 
Why is this not moving around? Is it like reached ultimate zoom in? Connor oh. says you've got to go down. Apparently. Trying to. I'm trying to go down. I mean, personally, I don't think that's a solution, but Connor said it, so give it a go. Yeah. Why are you being weird? There we go. <laughs> this is me define weird. Whatever. Yes. Can you be less weird right now? Oh, more like you. Okay. Anyway, Jan. Anyway. All right. So, how far is that one? That one is not giving me any information. 71 light years. Still not far enough. Not far enough. What exactly are you looking for? I'll tell you when I find it. I'm trying to find a a, syst a star system which is uh, close enough that I can jump to. Mm -hmm. 42. That one. I can do that one. That gets me out of this permit lock section. So oh, I, can start. I see. I see you. You're jinking around. You cannot come here, zone. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. But I'm trying to go in the right direction. It is a T-Tory, so mind your fuel. But fuel is fine. Right. So that will get me closer, and then I'll be able to probably plot the route from there. So hopefully this gets us out of the permit lock nonsense and then we can get to that trapezium sector. And then we'll have a really nice view of Barnard's Loop while we, um, let's see. All right, so we'll try it again. All right, so trapezium sector Y U. X, C, 1, dash, 2. So we should be out of the nonsense now. We are not out of the nonsense yet. Okay. All right. Wants to be like that? It would be so much easier if they had a freaking sign up on the galaxy that said, Nonsense here! It would, wouldn't it? How far are you? 61, slightly too far. What about you? 43. Right, that gets us a little bit closer. Set that target. Yeah, I think it's a bug. Oh, of course it's on the other side of the star. Of course it is. But we do get to fly a Mandalay through a plasma arc. Do I get to play the mandolin at this point? No, you do not get to play to the mandolin. To celebrate the, like, oh, whatever. <laughs> no mandolin for you. Right, so... I would like to get there fairly quickly because it's almost midnight. But I've really enjoyed this stream. So Spanch says that is the closest Guardian thing. Awesome. Mandalay. Mandalay. So jam. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it's it's like it's like when you've got a kid who just plain up because they want sweets. <laughs> oh. Yeah, kinda. Right. So So right. how basically has the thing performed? Very well. I, know, I know it's a bit broken, it's not finished yet, but how is it doing, generally? Uh, what, the ship? Yeah, the ship. It's The ship's not broken. Oh! The, the, the ship has one bug in it, and that's down to an animation. Oh, right. What the shit, missing the permit again. We're almost there. 54 light years. I can, I can do that. I can make that jump. I can make that jump. So it, it's, is it going to be like the, oh, screw you, this is my kick-ass ship now? Yep. Uh, I thought so. I'm well, because so it's it's simple. If you, Ships that do specific things are really needed. Because if I want to do exploration, they I'll are. use this. 
If I want to do trading on mass, I'll use a type 9. If I want to do risky trades where there's a chance I might get followed and interdicted, I'll take a type 8. Um, Python Mark II for certain types of combat. It's just, they're just good at that stuff. But if this is like the the far black ship, then hell yes, sign me up. Yeah, so this this is... I would go on an expedition in this ship, happily, because it, it's what it's designed for. Hey, Alexander Corbin, new ship will replace my Axe Explorer. I mean, it has no bridge or... No, no bridge. ...acting set that would be a thing. No. So... No, because if we... Mm. It's got a Mamba cockpit. Yeah. Which is awesome, by the way. If you step outside of it in VR and have a look, it is amazing. I mean, it might be worthwhile me having a chat to Jane and seeing if we could get uh, the... the the Mandalay cockpit. I mean, it does have a bridge. I mean, we're going to right a now. Shot. I mean, yeah, the Mamba is not a small cockpit, and this is the same thing as cut and paste. So, right. Yeah. But it's it's not fully cut and paste because it's got like Mamba pictures there, and so there is there is a bit of a bridge here. It's got floor there. Um, it's still not live. Still not live. Uh, not live yet. Yeah. No. Uh, so so here, as you can see here, there's like um. There's a bunk area. So this would be really cool to have as um, something you, we can play with for film, filmmaking. It's it's actually got a bunk. Yeah, it's I mean, still... be, behind the thing, there's like a downstairs with like... Hey, Mospedia. Thank um, you for the follow. A couple of storage shelves, all wrapped up. It is cool. Very mm. cool. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. It's driving me crazy. It's beautiful. Damn! Damn, this is the best ship you've made, Frontier. Best ship you've made. Right, uh... Right, so I want to find these Guardian Ruins. So if I do my Discovery Scanner... There's 11 bodies. It's just such a beautiful place to be. Uh, I'll use the, the Dubri and just find these planets. And see if they've got guardian ruins on them. This one, no, no features. It's a featureless snowball. This one. Welcome to the Milky Way, Jesus Another... Christ! The number of times I've seen a featureless snowball. Mm hmm. Right, what else have we got? There. Beautiful. But realistically, I'm not complaining because that is probably legit what is out there. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we are. Zoom in on that. That's an icy body. And do we have we have something else over here? Uh, at least they're not all beige balls anymore. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, because it can whilst it's probably more accurate it's I know. not as much the, fun the horrible truth is if you went out there in the galaxy they oh, probably yeah. would all be made oh you found a water world yeah ping that that needs a few probes up close how far away is it uh it doesn't matter fair enough sco drive yeah for the wind. yeah right so I'm, I'm gonna go see that right now and then we'll, we'll find it. It's really close, though. It's 700 light seconds away. Oh, easy money. Yeah. But it's so beautiful around here. All these nebulous um, gas clouds. It's so you, beautiful. You do have um, the, the ne two nebulas there. I can't identify them necessarily. But you've got the... I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Chr Chrissy Chew, thank you for the follow. Is that yeah. Polish? Mm I don't it know. has altogether too mu too many consonants, but you've got you've got like the the Milky Way ecliptic there to mm -hmm. the top right. That's a thing, but look at the colours there. You've got the red, you've got the the purple, all overlaid. Yeah, I popped mm. that up. Yeah. Oh. You, you think it's the Running Man Nebula, Connor? Okay. Ooh, look at this. You can see this water world here. 
I need to slow down well, though. Don't worry, Katsu, because it's going to be live soon enough. Just reel it back. Just breathe. Breathe. It's good. Well, it'll be here sooner than you realize. Oh, yeah. So it'll be... Um, so week commencing the 28th uh, is when it will be uh, available. So so we don't know precisely what what day. Um, so it might be on the 28th or it might be... Because uh, the 28th is the Monday. Also um, remember, Scorp is flying a version that is probably broken in one way or another. So, the version you get will be better. So, yeah. He's experiencing the problem, I'm gonna get so closer. you don't have to. I'm going to get closer. <laughs> yeah, you're probably just a little closer. It's easier for the scanning malarkey. Mm hmm. Oh, wrong button. Uh, that button. Yeah, so maybe next Tuesday, next week Tuesday, some yeah. Um, they, they are normally Tuesday, yes. It is a thing. So it might be a week Tuesday, but don't matter. It seems six. to be worth it. Oh, it's, the thing is, it's really good shit. I can't wait. I am very, very impressed, and I'm like drooling. I I don't normally jump on these new ships and like I want one, but. Yeah, this one's grabbed my attention. It has. So, yeah, there is a possibility I'll be straight out the gate and grab that one. Mm -hmm. Let's get that one on this side as well. Yeah, so, uh, like, the other ships, I've been impressed with all of them, to be honest. Yeah. One way or another, they've all got something to commend them. Mm. Every one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, updates on Tuesday could mess up the dead titan. Well, it won't be Tuesday. Ne it won't be Tuesday like in a couple of days. It'll be in over a week's time. Uh, Titan will probably be there by then. Whenever. Probably. I'm re really anyway, interested to you see. Were saying, you're saying about ships and the spread of ships and how it affects you and that. Well, no, you're 100. percent Nice. Let's have a look at it. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I mean, honestly, I do think that. Oh, look at that, it's pretty. I do think that more ships is better. It's pretty. Uh, and having having more ships uh, will only serve to improve the game for players because every ship feels different, so you get to experience the game in a different way. Hey, Ben Toby, thank you for the follow. You get to experience the, the the game in a different way, slightly in some cases, but like with this now, this opens up exploration to people who perhaps wouldn't have bothered before. This is true. Because this is true. Because now you've got I'm mean, not not just because it's a really good looking ship, but also though, it it has features like so that SCO drive is a thing that mm. is very useful for people. Ah, oh, that's really cold. Uh, I personally have mapped a well more than one system. I'll say where there was an Earth like just too damn far away for me to go and bother. Mm. So I mapped the rest of the system and regretted that I hadn't mapped the Earth like because it was too far away. Well, that's with this thing, ship. You can get that Hell, easy. You can just go straight out there and ka -ching, map that earth like for the monies. I want, I want the one now that's got the guardian stuff on here. Oh, there's a guardian planet in this system, is there? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Ooh. That's why I'm out here. That's why I was like trying to get out here. Uh, because this planet in particular, I think this is the origin... This might be the origin of the Proteus uh, technology. Oh, oh, the whole... Yeah, it had to kick off somewhere, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Trape trapezium sounds right, so... Yeah. It's, it's still missing Could well some. be. There. It's still... Right, so you... What are you? Don't matter. Rocky world. Icy world. Does oh, an HMC. Okay. System scan complete. Right, I've scanned everything, but I'm not. Uh, uh... Right, let's see if it's a thing on the. 
Are you sure it's one of these planets? What's happening? Well, there's... Who are you asking? Not me, I hope. Oh, no, no, I'm asking chat. I'll get to this one because it's landable. Chat is wiser than me. This is good. Let's check the system map, okay? Good shout. Very good shout. Uh, it's a big star, isn't it? So... 1A, says Epaphos. 1A. I have no reason to doubt him. Well, that's good. Right. Okay, let's go check that out. It could be because we didn't scan the planet yet, so it's not showing up. Um, maybe as we get closer to this, we'll, it'll start filling in the gaps in our knowledge. It, it's, uh... <laughs> if only that worked in real life. You sail closer to something and you get wiser. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Is it showing now? Nope. Uh, uh, showing the system one of the right tabs. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. It, it should show up now anyway as I uh, get close to it. Yes, it should. Let's see. But if not, then I'll I'll lob some probes at it. But I mean, like when you've got a, a background like this, I don't mind exploring at all this is this is um like a painting it's what you expect a, a painting a space to look like all the time but it isn't it's mostly black that is doctor. true that is true right so we'll get closer and closer and click right so it's about that's about it start doing the surface scan lob out a thing and i'll chuck one there one there. One there. Let's see if it works. See how many I get. Surface scanned by fifty percent. Lice the main brace and all that jazz. Oh, you are kidding me! Hey! I got an efficiency bonus as well. <laughs> you got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> okay, so crash site. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Right, this hey. is it. This is it. Right, so we got crash site, crash Stargoid ship, ancient ruins. Right, so let's go check the ancient ruins out. Uh, but there's also... Crash Thargoid boys here. Oh, this is the one in the light. No, they're all in the freaking dark. Damn. They're spooky as hell in the dark. But the great thing about this ship is it lands easily. None of the wibbling around trying to find uh, a good place to land. It's just so good. Crash that would be Thargoids. Ruins are Guardians. Yes. So we're going to look at the Guardians first, and then we'll uh, take a look. Oh, 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 actually, actually, let's look at a crash site. Because that, oh, they're all next to each other. Look at that. Hey, Hex98, how are you doing? Thank you for the follow. They're right next to it. So if we go to this crash site, we can do a little bit of science. A bit of science. Us. Science. And they call it a mine. Orbital flight engaged. Right, let's uh, go here. Is this land because of how... Uh, yes, because... So different ships have got... Um, so all the, all your landing gear points need to be um, on the ground. It needs to be a flat surface with very little deviation. Uh, unlike uh, Star Citizen, and uh, No Man's Sky, my God, that that thing has got no rules when it comes to landing. Star Citizen, as long as you get the ship down, um, then you're fine. Elite, 
has some rules. So no, 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 you've got to land on a flat surface, which can make uh, landing a bit tricky. Can do. Doesn't always. Uh, but the, the... So the narrower the, the, um, the distance between the, the landing legs, the easier it, it is to land the ship. So I think this is the crashed Thargoid down here, isn't it? Yep. Look at this. So this got shot down, basically. Whatever the Guardian thing was, this is an ancient one by the looks of it. It got shot down by the Guardians. So let's put my landing gear down. And let's have it, let's watch it land. This so cool. So, so see what I mean? Like, so the landing feet are actually quite close together, so it makes it a lot easier. It's in the dark, so it's a bit difficult. I'll, I'll take out the uh, scorpion tank, and you'll see what I mean. The lights really are a nice touch. They've done a really good job with the ship. I really, really, uh, I can't stress enough, uh, and I hope Frontier are watching, but I can't stress enough how good a job they've done on this. And this isn't me, like, just like a, hey, Frontier, you've done amazing stuff. They've, like, when work is good, I will call it out as such. So see how they got the legs here? They're all pointing inwards into, like, a triangle giving you so the outsides of this triangle the circle that's the spot that needs to be flat so if you can get that flat then this ship will land anywhere right so but if you take something like an anaconda which is basically an oil tanker or a type 9 or a type 10 which is basically a warehouse you you don't need landing permission you need planning permission it's like massive look at these engines this is so cool this ship is so freaking cool. And these gimbaled engines here, I can't get enough of them. Let me go outside. Drive assist off. So we can have a look at this. Alright, so... So... Oh, first... No way have I got first footfall on here. No way. This is because it's a test server. Oh, come on. <laughs> Get me in the engine. Inside. Get in the engine. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, needs to be <laughs> submitted in triplicate. Yes. Uh, do I have my lights? Torch. There we go. Right, where's where's this stop? Where's this um crashed thing? Is that it over there? Are we? How close are we? There's definitely something over there. I think it's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, we're going in the right direction. Why am I walking? I have a car. <laughs> Which I've now lost. What is wrong with me? There we go. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that... That stuff with the... Um, the suits and engineering i don't like it I'll, I'll i'll admit it i don't like it because why on earth would we have to engineer that and not buy these as modules all right that's that's I, I do not like it we should be able to go to a shop and say i want to buy a um night vision for my suits and pay a price 
and get different grades of them. So they'll use battery at different speeds, things like that. I want to be able to do that. I don't want to have to go and collect paper clips from some office somewhere to go and um, engineer it. And then for it to be permanently stuck to the suit. I want, there's no reason for that. It doesn't make logical sense. It might make technical sense from the engine standpoint, but logical, no. Let's disembark. Binoculars fell out of use in the future too as well. I know, right? Right, let's go over here, have a look at this. And these are really pretty as well. I've got my lights on, am I? No, I turned them off. Because I'm an idiot. Uh, da, da, da. Um, where's the eye? Is it over there? Is it? Is this the eye thingy? It's an eye thingy. So... We are nearby um, Barnard's Loop, and on this planet, there is downed Thargoid vessels and ancient Guardian bases. So why on Earth were there Guardians? Why were they... What was happening? I think because once upon a time, uh, the Guardians were at war with the Thargoids, just as we are now. Right, we'll go back to the ship and we'll go to the, the Guardian ruins. Is that its butthole? <laughs> so just, just as we are now... So the Guardians went extinct two million years ago. And... Oh, we think they do. They might, they might exist somewhere else. But they, they had a big war with, with AI. And, and or, or they had a civil war, wasn't it? They had a civil war with people who wanted to have nothing to do with technology and those who wanted um, to be able to do stuff with, you know, with, with AI and stuff. And there is a there is a guardian AI out there somewhere. We think what state that's in after two million years, we do not know. really do hope that we start seeing something along these lines. <laughs> Bravo to the sound team once more. There's a crashed human ship here as well. Four, three, two, one, <laughs> uh, that would be quite cool. Let's go to the ancient ruins. It would be really cool if they show up. Unless the gardens are terminated by an AI, then what we see now are assimilated goids under AI control. Oh my god, that that's a that's a hot take, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. It is the guardians all along. Damn, I do need, I need to get a bit more distance. Not that much distance. <laughs> All right, that's better. See, this is another thing that the SCO driver is good for. Getting you away from planets. If you just want to go to the other side of it, instead of like, oh, I'm stuck in the gravity, it's going to take me ages. Nah, just hit the damn boost button. Off you go. Best feature ever. I mean, any ship will do that. Any ship with an SCO drive. Doesn't have to be this one.
make sure that my night vision is on. See which which kind of ruins this is. I've been here before, but it's a um, been a while. See, there's our guardian base. Which type are you? This is almost Sentinels. So this is another thing, like, sometimes landing near these bases is a royal pain in the ass. So let's see how this does. It's going to try and find a place to land. I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to let... And now it's landing right next to the thing. Should I go out in my SRV? Uh, yes, because we're going to have nasty boys, aren't we? Do some science on two million year old ancient ruins. Because of course this is the only way we can do science. What fell off? Uh, nothing apparently. Let something move around. Oh, we got some baddies, look. No, that that's that's me. That's my ship. Where's the baddies at? Guardian Sentinel, where are you? Da -da 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 -da. Does it stand a chance? No, it does not stand a chance. Where is he? <laughs> two, two homing missiles. That's it. It's done. No, it does not stand a chance. Oh, there's bits down there, though, isn't there? They they drop gubbins. Uh, it's a power conduit. Give me that. Give me it. Why 
is it not picking up? Did I just yeet it somewhere? There's a Guardian tablet there. Don't know if that's any use anymore. Really think that the, there was an opportunity missed with all of this stuff. Uh, that that these these should point to each other, in, in my opinion. If you go here, there should be something that, that tells you where the other Guardian bases are. If you can hack their um, th their nodes on their... Because um, you've got all these boys, haven't you, with the... Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? These things. You should be able to um, hack these, scan these, and then find out where the next one is, if you can find an active one. Because it's such a missed opportunity, I think. Uh, maybe this is something that they'll do, um, especially if they uh, start working more on um, Guardian content. Reworking all of this would certainly be uh, a thing to do. Because they're so, these places are so spooky. I love them. I love them and hate them at the same time. I I hate them because it just got turned into a grind, into something to just get stuff. You know. What are you? Are you a sentinel? No, you're just a bit of rock. I really do think it was a missed opportunity, and and it, and it bugs me. But with every everything. Uh, there's always a chance to improve, isn't there? They're redoing power play, so why not this stuff? They don't need to redo it per se, you just need to add to it and connect it more. Join up the dots a little bit more. Make it amazing. You're still looking for mountain from landmark signal. Uh, how do you mean? So I'm not going to do anything with this tonight, but I will log out here because, uh, like, I, I find this particular place fascinating. The fact that we got these uh, Guardian um, ruins, I think there's an old, I think there's an OG ruin on this planet as well. There's an ancient one here, another one. I think we should go. Uh, it's oh, it's driving distance. It's driving distance, 100 and something kilometers. So we're not going to drive that far, but we'll fly there. 148 kilometers, yes, please. <laughs> There's one signal that was decoded around four or five years ago that's shown a mounting on a spectrograph, but nothing more. Do you have a link to that? I'd like to look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite driving distance. I know. Well, let's go see it. I think this one's an old school one. Where is the damn thing? Angel Ruins. Lock destination. Oh, yeah, I suppose because it's a uh, different target than what the ship has. All right, 147 kilometers. We get there. It's a short walk. We've had worse, right? You saw me climb up, um, <laughs> right to get into my ship after I drove up a, a cliff face. This is for.
140 kilometers? I don't bloody think so. Best invention ever. It's on the Canon website, is it? Okay, I'll take a look in a sec. So this is one of the um, ancient ruins, the old school ones. Heard from the bubble when targeting Saj A. I'll take a look at that in a sec. What is this? This, yeah, this is an old school one. Okay. Looks cool though. Let's see if we can land on this plinth. Can we land on this plinth? No. I'll see if you can figure out where to land. It's very dark. Where's he going to put it? Oh, I'm not. I'm saying Sag. Sagittarius. Uh, see you there. Hey, buddy. Uh, I have got um, school tomorrow, but... Um, I'm enjoying the uh, the new the Mandalay so much. Although the auto land is having difficulty with this uh, particular bit of uh, landing, it's trying. It's working on it. These engines, though. These are great. Where are you going? Come on, you've got this. It's having a crack at it. <laughs> Giving it a bit of a challenge, I think. That is... That's... Are you, really? You're doing it? You're going to land like that? Oh my god. It landed on a slope. <laughs> oh, Bugio, you think? Yeah, it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Like, there's, there's no two ways around it. This is the best ship that they've made. Well, look, it's got the ride height. It's got the landing height to uh, deploy any SRVs. Right, so not like your Type 8. <laughs> but the Type 8's not an exploration ship. You know, that's, that's the thing. Not every ship has to be the same, and I really like that. Full beams. I've always loved these places. over to here and then I th they've adjusted the type 8 now have they but so does it lift up now it might have been a bugged animation you know Because there was, there was ooh, speculation uh, initially that that this ship wouldn't be able to fit inside the landing bay because the wings looked too wide. So that's that's the thing. But I am going to call time on the stream right here because, yes, it is quite late. Here in this beautiful, beautiful nebula at a Guardian ruin 
in the dark. So sorry about that. But what better way to appreciate the, the majesty? Uh, the, 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 the things that this game can show, you know? And a really pretty ship to go and explore them in. That's that's what we're what we're, we're talking about here, isn't it? So the update will be out. It's delayed, so but it will be out the week commencing the twenty eighth. So sometime during that week, um, no idea what day. Keep it. Keep your eye on your socials. Uh, Frontier will more than likely let everyone know well ahead of time. Um, so all that remains for me is to see say thank you to everyone for coming along let's see who else is playing some elite uh let's get a lovely raid going on uh we have a choice we've got Celine, we've got stargoid who else is uh doing things and stuff and things um let me browse to see who else is on there because uh as always um you guys always get the um the veto you can say whoever you want to 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 raid uh so we haven't raided celine actually for quite some time uh let's go and raid celine celine star dragon lovely content creator yeah it, it sounded like hmm? it right so uh so yeah so get your hashtag blame ascorbiuses in chat so we're going to get a raid going on have a good week take care of yourselves i'll see you next week on sunday for another we'll probably do a bit more exploring around uh, barnard's loop and we'll still have this ship i think and we'll also have more information about what's what day it's going to be launched i would wager if not then we'll be doing something else but it, we'll see it's always fun when we, we we do this stuff together anyway so get ready to raid so oh you're more than welcome um i, I i've really enjoyed tonight as you can tell because it's like nearly one in the morning <laughs> i started at eight <laughs> so have a good time fly aimless take care of yourselves i'll see you next week take care bye bye for now <laughs>